If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this special oh. 420 episode A little of bit Mind sentimental. Pump. It's like a holiday for pump heads, it right? Is. <laughs> it definitely is. I don't I mean, know how the four, majority. I would do, think. Does anybody I, know how four twenty came out? You, oh no, let's not go down that rabbit hole. Okay. There's lots of speculation. Lots on, of theories. Yeah, if it was, it was a like great, after if school, it, if it was or, a Grateful Dead thing, if it was an after school thing, if it, oh, there's so many like ideas yeah. on what it's supposed well, to be. Well, it is four twenty. Mm. We do, you know, cannabis is always kind of like a background thing a to topic. mind pump. And, you know, you were in the business and we're all interested in it. And, uh, you know, Justin eats edibles every day. So uh, we're all. <laughs> <laughs> you out me like that, bro. Just kidding. But we're, you know, uh, it's a 420 episode. What we did is we took our qua and we moved it to Sunday. So you're still going to get your regular programming. It just moved over <laughs> to Sunday. Programming. Today's episode was uh, no direction. We, we had uh, five to 10 milligrams of. THC and uh, started the podcast and had a great time. We started out by talking about old time training wisdom and unexpected muscle building exercises. You know, that part of the episode was really good where we got into like what, how they used to work out and the history of it and mm-hmm. how that the, their advice applies to today. No, I promise even though this is a high episode, a lot of fitness I promise well, there's- really kick in. There is some- a little bit later. Let's just say there's some <laughs> nugget bombs. There are some this. serious nugget bombs in this episode. In your mouth. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. We had, uh, you'll know why when you listen Too to this far. episode. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's... We uh, we talked about counterproductive workouts, uh, VR sports, virtual reality sports. Look out. Tattoos yeah. and body modifications- Prohibition and unwanted behavior. We talked about Reefer Madness. This is the crazy uh, propaganda film that was put out a long time ago to show pe- to get people too pretty scared hilarious to and worth a watch Super. for sure. We talk about the war on cannabis, cannabinoids, and cancer. Coffee and cannabis. Cannabinoids as the re- regulators of the body. And then we talked about all kinds of stuff in the business oh of my cannabis. God. So much more. Yeah, earwax yeah. and putty yeah. and clear and the downsides of overusing it. And then we had a trip down memory lane. We talked a lot about uh, the yes. old days of mind pump, uh, insecurities. The somewhere, old shock and somewhere in there, we mentioned the worst marketing ideas mind pump has ever, ever, the ever. The only one we could think of was mine. Ever had. And <laughs> I promise you, unless you're like an old time listener, you are, not, you are not familiar with what we talk about in this episode. And I don't think we've ever gone into that much detail. No. Quite embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, oh, we did mention, I did mention Four Sigmatic. We weren't even supposed to, and I did anyway. I talked about Chaga and its cancer-killing effects. Four Sigmatic is one of our sponsors. If you go to four, F-O-U-R, Sigmatic, S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C dot com forward slash Mind Pump, and enter the code Mind Pump, we got a special discount for you. And before the episode begins, I do want to remind everybody, we are giving away the No BS Six Pack Formula for free if you enroll in a MAPS bundle. MAPS bundles are where we take two or more MAPS programs specifically for a particular goal. We combine them and then we discount the price like 20, 30% off. For example, the MAPS Super Bundle is a year of exercise programming. So it's a whole year planned out for you. Enroll in any of those bundles, get the No BS Six Pack Formula for free. You can find all of them at mindpumpmedia.com. Happy 420. Hey! Happy 420, boys. Yeah. Let's see where this podcast goes, yeah. huh? <laughs> We're going to go to the stratosphere. So, have you guys ever thought about no, reality? Hey, finish, and- finish, <laughs> finish, <laughs> what do you finish really your think statement about that you were talking about with, because uh, I really like when you post these, the old timey stuff, like I, you're, and you're getting a ton of traction. I see a lot of people are liking it. So, well, here, so here's the thing about um, muscle building and it, it reminds me of, the mar- of martial arts. Let me explain what that what I mean by that. <laughs> Mar- oh, exactly. Let me explain what I mean. And I'm, and I'm still sober. The edible hasn't even hit yet. <laughs> hasn't even hit yet. So with martial arts, uh, martial arts have been around way longer, way longer, than thousands weight, of than years lifting. than lifting. You know, weight training. Now, exercise has been around for a long time. Also, martial arts that was part of their you know of martial arts was training. Yeah, it was more like weapons training and pre- preparation for war. Yeah, but but like actual resistance training to build muscles, get stronger. That's a that's a relatively new thing and it wasn't really popular or I sh- at least I should say it wasn't something that was structured until the like the 19th century, you know, like eight uh, the late 19th century, like 1840s, 1850s and then early 20th century. 
And what, the reason why I'm making this comparison is when people talk martial arts, because I was also pretty into that as well. At one point when I was a kid, I used to read a lot of books on the history of different martial arts. This conversation always comes up. Uh, this martial art is 10,000 years, years old and look at the ancient wisdom that they had then or look at the way Kung Fu masters trained back during these times and here's why these moves look a particular way. For example, in uh, certain styles of Kung Fu, you see these really low stances, like these really, really low stances and then they do these kicks where they use what's called the the ridge of the foot, the side of the foot, mm -hmm. and you ask yourself, well, you know, why does why did they do that? Well, back then, a, a lot of these guys were would, were on boats and they had to defend themselves on boats, and that low stance helped them out. Helped they the also balance, yeah. also they, there's evidence that they used to wear these sandals with seashells along the sides of their foot, and so when they would kick with that ridge, so we got a nice little weapon. But there. anyway, it's fascinating mm -hmm. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when it comes to weight training and building muscle. There is a tremendous amount of old wisdom that comes from the guys that worked out in the 19th century and early 20th century. And the reason why there's a lot of wisdom is, you know, there's so much that, uh, uh, there's so much about exercising your body and about nutrition that you can boil down to feel. How does your body feel? Do what's best for your body. We communicate this all the time. Well, back in those days, that's all they had. Yeah, they had nothing else. They, first off, no comparison data to to run off of. That, first off, supplements didn't exist. Steroids, they might have existed in in laboratories and stuff like that, but they were not used. Steroids weren't really used until the nineteen maybe thirties and forties, and they weren't widely used until probably the sixties, maybe fifties and sixties. So they didn't have those things, and they didn't have uh, you know government saying don't eat fat or saturated fat. Don't eat this, don't eat that, eat this. They didn't have any of that information. So it was totally based off of wisdom. Wisdom passed on from other strong men and also what worked. And so, you know, years ago, just because I'm a, I am consider myself a student of the game, it's something that really interests me. Years ago- you, Sorry, I don't want to- Were all those books that were you posting, do you own all those? I do. Oh, so I was wondering if those were screen- You no. own all those? Yeah. So I'll Bro, tell you, can you please bring those in of here? Of course. I'll tell you the story about those in just a second. So- Years ago, um, I, I started really getting into how the old time bodybuilders worked out. People like Steve Reeves and John Grimmick and Bill Pearl and all those guys. And then that led me to look even further back. And then I started reading about Eugene Sandow and mm -hmm. Lewis Kyer and all these other strong men. Some of them were ripped. Some of them were fat. All of Charles them had- Charles Atlas. Yeah. All of them had incredible feats of strength. Like- yeah. Eugene Sandow, let me let me explain something to you. Eugene Sandow probably weighed about 180-something pounds, maybe 190 pounds, shredded. You can still see pictures mm. of him. Very muscular guy. Was he the one that held everybody in a bent press on a bench Bro, overhead? He, he, he held a record, which was verified because they used to have these competitions where strongmen would compete. He did a one-arm bent press with 370 fucking pounds. Damn, dude. Yeah, yeah. 300. So in, crazy. In uh, one arm. Now, the bent awesome. press. That's more than Jessica can deadlift. Yeah. Uh, it is. It's, it is. That, that makes me sad. Yeah. It's, well, hold on a second. I don't know. Here's my man card. I don't know a lot of roid heads. Okay, maybe not pro bodybuilders, stuff, but I don't know a lot of juice heads that can do a full squat with 370. Yeah. Seriously, like a real squat. Right, right. This guy's doing a... One arm uh, quarter squat don't count. Yeah, he's doing a one arm hundred and he weighed like less than one hundred ninety pounds or definitely less than two hundred pounds. One arm bent press, which is a lot of technique involved, but I don't give a shit. You're supporting that thing with your anyway. These guys did incredible feats of strength. So I did a bunch of research and I'm like, what do these guys communicate? And I also read. Uh, I also started reading Vince Garanda, who was a uh, a, a natural bodybuilder. He trained people. He was one of the first gym owners. Owners. So Jack LaLanne, Vince Garanda, and there's a couple other people, Joe Gold. These guys opened up gyms. They were the first guys to open gyms. He had a gym in North Hollywood uh -huh. right around, uh, I believe, in the 1960s. Do you know much about – so before that, though, they had actual gymnasiums. So, oh, yeah. So, yeah, it was all like this it was, crazy ass – like it looked completely different. You had That's where you actually had Indian clubs. You had vertical ladders. You had ropes and, rings. and climbing rings. And, yes. And it was like a, for the community to oh, just yeah. go Now, to. those existed at the turn of the 19th uh, – at the, at the end of the 19th century, early 20th century. But they weren't – 
they weren't specifically designed for like building muscle, getting stronger. Right. It was more calisthenics and yeah. everyday function. Yeah. And it was kind of like this lifestyle type thing. And Vince Garanda had a gym, one of the first gyms. And a lot of the equipment he had in there, he made himself. Hmm. And so I read, I, I would read stuff that he would write. You guys would be fucking blown away. Like these guys were saying shit like, uh, the old strongmen were saying things like, uh, don't like train hard. But don't train. Don't train with uh, maximum intensity, or they would use other verbiage. But basically, they were saying, "Don't beat yourself up." Uh, you know, train hard, but don't beat yourself up because you need to have energy to train again a couple days later. They would say, "Eat lots of uh, uh, eggs, meat, cream, full fat, dairy yeah. liver. to build muscle, Stomach. liver, yeah. uh, organ meats." They yes. were big oh, on organ yeah, meats. That's right. Um, and when they wanted to get trim, here's what they would say: avoid. Uh, sweets, pastries, flowers, and sugar. This is what they used to say back in those days. It's, kind of, it's pretty so crazy. crazy how forward thinking they were back Bro, then. Bro, it's so crazy. Uh, Vince Garanda, uh, I read a, I had a book. Uh, do, you, do you think that's because a lot of the science has been bastardized? Totally. By yep. companies? Totally. Oh, yeah. Like back then it was all based off of what we, we could, you know, you, you get a group of buddies, you're all lifting, you try all these things, and together we figure this out. Where now... So much science is involved because so many of these companies now. Well, are wasn't many- it the sugar companies that came to lobby and 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 they just basically tainted all information of saturated fat? Like <laughs> the, it was proven. The single worst thing that's ever happened to health and fitness was the whole saturated fat, high fat hypothesis that was totally flawed, and it 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 ruined it ruined completely ruined uh, the health of Americans, and it derailed our understanding of nutrition by about 40 years because before that there were scientists that were saying things like yeah thanks food pyramid yeah, there were scientists that were saying things like high sugar high consumption of, of flour probably not good for you you probably should eat you know uh, fats uh, they're, they're good for you cholesterol was never an issue Vince Caronda wrote in one of these old <clears throat> books that I read literally one of the best ways to increase your your natural hormone levels and he was talking mainly about testosterone was to eat a lot of eggs Hmm. He said, "Eat a lot of eggs, and you'll feel virile and strong." He actually said this, and this is true. You 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 bump up your cholesterol intake like crazy, you will feel an increase in testosterone. It'll it'll feel that way. And I don't know how long that lasts because the liver tends to regulate it, right? But you definitely feel it. So I you know I would read all these things, and then I think to myself like, hmm, like like why did we stray away from this? Well, it made me question a lot of the stuff that I had thought was was kind of true. Yeah. And so then when I and that's really that's part of the whole piece of How did of you me. first find that? Like when did you like start reading that? I first was, let's see. Cuz I never got into that. I wish I found something like that when I was coming up as a trainer because yeah. I was constantly I was digesting all the bullshit that was being fed yeah. from the company, yep. you know, like yeah. because we wrongly believe that if information is new it's better. Yeah. You know what I mean? We think like, oh, it's cutting edge, therefore it's better. There's a lot of old wisdom, and the funny thing is, and this, by the way, is not this is true for any kind of wisdom. How many times now have we learned something in science and be like, oh fuck, it looks like they were right what yeah. they were saying five thousand years ago? After we made fun, like fasting, fasting we made fun of for a long time in health and fitness. In fact, we were taught. I remember specifically being in nutrition courses and certification, uh, uh, you know, personal training certification courses, and they would literally make fun of fasting and laugh at it and say that's that's terrible not good for you make you fatter oh god the body- opposite message we were we were giving which is breakfast is the most important breakfast yeah. meal of the day yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what i'm saying you just got to start off and yeah. you got you need all these nutrients as soon as you start your day there <laughs> is you can't discredit wisdom that's la- that's lasted for thousands of years or that's been passed down at least at the very least and it's not always right but at the very least it should point you in the right direction so the first time I really started diving deep was, well, first off, my dad was a fan of Steve Reeves when I was a kid because in Italy, uh, they had these, uh, what were these Hercules movies were really popular and, and they were made in Italy. Steve Reeves just go to Italy and make them. And so they were released in Italy uh, and they were dubbed. But my dad, when he was a kid, obviously very poor, he would work and he'd give his mom money and every once in a while she'd give him a quarter or whatever the, whatever, you know, 500, uh, Lire, uh, milliliter. It's a, not, they don't use that currency anymore. And he would go to the movies and he'd watch Hercules movies. And so when I was a kid, he would tell me about Steve Reeves and oh, you know. So I was already kind of like I knew who he was. So probably in my, I don't know, maybe my late twenties. I by this point I'd really started to examine workouts and I started to question things. And so I looked up Steve Reeves' workout and I said, oh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll take a look at his workout. And I read it and I looked at him like, that looks. You know, that's a full body three day a week routine. I thought that was for like beginners. Like that's what we were told. Like this is not something advanced people do. 
And then you look at his physique and you're like, God, the guy looked incredible. He was strong. So I just started looking up old routines. We have the internet, so you can do that now. And I just started looking up all these old routines and finding all these consistencies. Like they all did certain things and they all had these feats of strength. And so I started questioning things and started applying them. And little by little, I realized that th- what the advice that they were giving is way more valuable than the advice I was getting, you know, currently from, you know, roided out pro yeah. bodybuilders, bodybuilders and supplement forums. companies. And, yeah. Well, how old are you at this point right now? I'm probably in my lid, mid to late twenties. Oh, okay. So you're older and wiser yeah, at this yeah, point. Yeah. Cause I was thinking that if I found that stuff probably when I was like in my late teens, early twenties and I'm getting all this information from the company and all these other people that are teaching me to how to sell shit, I probably would have just discredited and moved along. Yeah. So those books that you saw, I posted a bunch of them on my, on my, on my Insta stories. I, the, this girl that used to work with me, she was a physical therapist. She did gut testing and hormone testing and great, awesome girl. I learned a lot from her. Her dad came to visit. Uh, he was from the East Coast, came to visit once and he came to our studio and I met him. He was a big dude, tall dude. You ever meet a dude, a guy and you like, you, you can tell they used to probably be pretty fucking jacked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that was him. And he, he was a bodybuilder in the- and Then they shake your hand, almost crush it. Yeah. He was a bodybuilder in the seventies and eighties, right? He, he doesn't lift weights anymore, but you could tell he still got the remnants of it. So me and him hit it off right away. And then I started talking about like old time bodybuilders. And he was surprised that I knew a lot of the not so, like more than just Arnold. I knew all the other guys. So me and him just became buddies. And he's like, dude, I got all these old bodybuilding books. He's like, would you want them? He's like, I don't have a son. He's like, I planned on sending them to my son. My daughter's not into it. She's like, my son-in-law is definitely not into it. That's because her her husband was a bit of a... I'm like pansy, I don't like it. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole nother story. So he sent me a box of all these Doesn't old lift. <laughs> all these old bodybuilding books. So How I started, cool, dude. dude. So I, I started know. reading that's them. Pretty badass. And I remember as a kid seeing Those them. Those are gonna be worth money too, man. I don't know, man. They're, they're all from the eighties, seventies and eighties. Oh, they looked older than that to me. No, so, but they were written by bodybuilders who were from the sixties. Okay. So. so by this point they're like Vince Garanda in the eighties wasn't like competing and stuff. He was just a a fitness guru. Um, so I started reading these things and, and just the other night, cause I'd never, I hadn't looked through them. I just thought I they would were cool. love to have those in the studio. We oh. have to get, I mean, I know Taylor ordered, or I think is on ordering right now, the bookshelf for the studio anyway. So those got to be on the bookshelf. All right, shelf, but dude. we got it. I'll bring my Arnold encyclopedia too, but we got it. These are like, yeah, these are like, uh, uh, yeah. Bro, yeah, we like take care of the alarm dude. system in here and everything. That knows dude, <laughs> they have to be. But anyway, I was reading one Some of them. Spill they, any Luna they on they it. break into our studio. <laughs> they, they, steal yeah. the, they don't steal the cameras or any equipment. They steal our books. I'm just books. saying, somebody, <laughs> somebody spills coffee on one of those books. This is a, there's going to be a yeah. fight. That's yeah. all yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, I was, I was uh, reading them the other night and I was just like, I was annoying everybody in the house because every five minutes I was like, holy shit, look what he said here. Whoa, look what. Like Vince Garanda goes, train to failure should be done seldomly and. Uh, really only benefits the super genetically gifted steroid taking bodybuilders. Wow, that, he stated that. Yeah. <laughs> that's those are his exact. Damn, we can't I, say we said nailed that. it. I took yeah. a screenshot. Nailed of it. it. I took a screenshot of it, and he said that. He he was advocating don't train to failure back in you know the 1960s and 70s and all that shit. That's how, how fucking rad is that? Yeah, man? that's so crazy. Isn't that cool? It is cool. Anyway, well, I remember when you first. I mean, when you first sent over the uh, first lead magnet that Doug had ever created with you. And I think it was either the muscle switch one. I think that was okay it, was it the muscle switch either that one? or the forgotten exercise or something. Like oh that. Yeah. yeah, maybe you sent both to me at the same time. But I remember now, mind you, I'm well, I'm already 30 years old by now, so I've already been through all the bullshit, put the bullshit together, and I'm like on my way of like really piecing yeah, all. You this. know your shit, right? And and then you send that over, and I'm like, oh my god, I have never came across someone advertising to me the fucking right shit. This is it. This is what people need to know. And I remember. That's what triggered all of this. Like mm-hmm. this, it's so nuts to me that how Mind Pump came about and because we were all on our, you know, different paths. I mean, we all didn't hang out on a regular basis. I mean, I was seeing Justin on a regular basis at that time because we were building the app and you and Doug were, you were training mm-hmm. Doug and working on a, a side project, but we were all kind of set in our own businesses and careers and like, yeah, you know, you would if you get a, if you get a, um, if you get a group of people who don't, no, and I've talked about this uh, before with people on Instagram because they'll send me a study and then the study will show that something that we've said uh, is right. You know, like, oh shit, study came out that showed that what you guys said about nutrition or what you guys said about training was was right. And so people like to share those with me. And I'm sure we've been wrong 
and we've corrected ourselves. People just probably don't tend to share those. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this shows that you're wrong. But you know, I get those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. But, but people will send that kind of stuff. And my answer is always like this. Like if you get enough people with integrity and who are really searching for objective truth, at some they may have different paths, but at some point, the answer to one plus one is two. Yeah. At some point, people are going to find the same answer because it's it's the truth. And that's you know what I found with you guys. Like when we sat down, and, and that's why that's why the, those videos resonated with you. It wasn't because you learned something new. As you were watching, you're like, oh fuck, he's on the same page. I remember when we sat down, we would talk about this stuff. It was it, it was like, oh shit, that's what I that's exactly what I discovered. That's what I found. That's what yeah. I found. And so it just all culminated. And I think people are just if people are objective, they'll, they'll eventually come to that point. And, and fitness is starting to. Oh, it's how we can direction. predict it with some of our friends that are, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, we just know. It's like, oh, it's it's a give you a few more years, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? You'll exactly. come around. I remember being there. I remember being hard up on it like that. But, yep. you know, they'll, but, they'll come around eventually. But these old lifts, because more recently, I just told you, I, I put on, I've probably gained about seven or eight pounds of lean body mass, which is a lot of weight for me because I've been working out for so long. My body's pretty stable. Do you have you felt your appetite increase too because so, of it? So, so my gut health is is much better. So the fasting, the the monthly fasting, has made a tremendous difference. It's like one of the best things I've ever done. And then so I changed wait, my workout. You know, it's funny. You got to like you uh, you got to highlight what you just said there too. That because I, I think most people that have not incorporated fasting, their biggest fear is to not be able to build or get bigger with that. And the fact that you do right, a three- how do they look at it as a performance enhancement? Right. As yeah. a, you have a three day fast that you're doing, and here's an example of like something that makes you healthier. Uh, is going to give you a better ability. Uh, it's going to uh, give your body a better ability to adapt. So, if you're less healthy, your body probably won't build as muscle as effectively or burn fat as effectively and all that stuff. If you're healthy, then those adaptations are just easier, and that just makes sense. It's just I don't think I have to argue that. And so my gut health is a lot better because of the the 48 72 hour fast that I do once a month. Um, it's just made a huge difference. And then on top of it, I've incorporated like a whole bunch of lifts that I've never, I'd never done consistently like Zercher squats, Z- Zercher deadlifts. I've never done those yeah. on a very regular basis. Heavy ass farmer walks. I've never done those on a regular basis. Like there's, there's a few lifts that I've been doing now that, that when I first started doing them in my workouts, I wasn't super good at them. So like Zercher squats, I started with 135 because I wasn't good at them. My form would break. I just wanted to perfect them. You know, now I'm, 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 I'm gonna, I should be able to Zercher squat three plates here, and I feel like in the next month or two because I'm getting better at it. But you know, when that happens, what happens? You build muscle. I don't yeah. remember how much I got up to. Well, I remember we. Were started, you doing them consistently? For yeah. Me? So when we, when we, the Zercher and Z press are probably the two most. That one too. I started doing u- unique movements that I wasn't doing in the past. That I've since we've been in Mind Pump. So I'm trying to think of like all the things that like I've really incorporated since Mind Pump. Like mm-hmm. there's a lot of things that we were all figuring out on our own before. But there's some movements that I, I neglected. I think that I go whoa, like I can't believe these Isn't weren't that crazy? somehow yeah. in my routine. But they just were overlooked as they, they didn't fall into the category that what I thought fit what I was trying to do. Mm-hmm. That was always my thing, right? Like oh, I don't do those things because. I don't care about those things. I'm not a, I'm not the an athlete, or I'm not the a power lifter. Or I'm not these people. So why would I ever train exactly. the, train this exercise? And so you stay in this. With the irony of and that, the other is, thing that you don't give it a chance. You try it once. You're like, oh, that's kind of awkward. I don't want to do it again. Right. Mm-hmm. And th- to me, this is this is most important to the lifter who's been lifting for a while. Like if you're a new person, like any any adaptation you throw at any exercise you throw at it your body's going to adapt and it's going to change and you're going to see results. But when you're guys like us or you're somebody who's been training for years and years and years pretty consistently, like making sure you're introducing one, these these uh, other movements and then missing these big, huge ones like the Z-Press or the Zercher, like they're just weird and unconventional and they're not popular. So they've, st- so, but the it's, fact it's that- It's so funny because that's exactly what I, you know, focused on and, and that's what drew me into that whole world and, and all those different lifts was that nobody was doing them. Nobody's doing them. Nobody gives a shit about them. Um, you know, I, I don't know what it is about it. Maybe it's just like this punk rock thing. You know, I just don't, I don't <laughs> fucking like- you Well, know. no, you share something in common with me, which is we. I don't like to go down the beaten path. I don't yeah. want to be like everybody else. So I'm already searching to be different. Yeah. And then when you find out be- different is better, yes, you feel even more passionate. That, that was so crazy. It was right. it was eye opening, and I remember that because even in the 
um, Gold's Gym setting. I was training clients out of there, and I was real good friends with a lot of the bodybuilders. And um, you know, like I would, I would take some of my clients to like more of a bodybuilder routine and like focus on aesthetics. But uh, I started incorporating like Olympic rings and and kettlebell presses and all these different and and it would get all this attention. And so I was like, oh, business wise too, this is great, right? Mm-hmm. I'm getting, I'm drawing you know eyes and I'm getting attention for this. But then my clients started to get like stronger and they were able to build you know good muscle, solid muscle that stayed and and. It didn't really click until later I started really training like that for myself and adding Zurchers, adding mm-hmm. these uh, really unique lifts and different things. And it, man, it, it, it took my body to new levels as far as strength. And so, I mean, I've been in that, I've been in that mentality for a long time to where now I'm almost in the opposite of coming back to kind of more traditional type of, mm-hmm. uh, you know, hypertrophy training. It's funny because again, it's that, it's that old wisdom. A- exercise or resistance training used to be about 100% about results. Which exercises are going to make you the strongest and then which exercises are going to build the bo- most muscle. And then something happened where it became how to make this e- easier. And that's partially, believe it or not, I hate to say it, a large part of the of the fault of that goes to the uh the 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 corporate gyms or the large, you know, big box gyms because their goal was look, gyms made no fucking money, dude, yeah. for a long time. Gyms were a, a a massive waste of money. Oh, they were like a private club back then. Yeah, yeah. And, and no, no, that a group, of, a small group of people that were weird and super different, super serious were, people yeah. back yeah, then. That's yeah. it. That's it. And so gyms were like, "How are we going to make money? We need to attract the average person." And one of the things they did was making it easier. And so a lot of these exercises fell out of favor. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you what, right now, like uh, for in terms of like building muscle. Because I like some exercises blow me away in terms of how functional they make me. Uh, windmills, for example, you know, windmills—they're not massive muscle builders, but boy, do they increase mobility and control in your core, and they're great. And I, it's now a staple in my routine. It's like opening a communication channel that never even existed there. So exactly. Now you can, yeah, you can brace in certain angles and situations you place your body in with loaded weights. So it, it's like, of course, it's going to contribute. Exactly. But at my core. And and uh, and I think you're probably like this too a little bit, Adam. At my core, I like building muscle. Like if if the exercises I'm gonna tend oh, to go I, towards. Oh, I used to always say I'm I'm all show no go. You remember that, Justin? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I, all show no go. I and I used to say, hey, I used to make fun of you for that. Right. For sure, yeah. I, all my trainers used to tease me that. Said, yeah. Man, that's for the birds, dude. I just gotta look good. You know, what <laughs> especially what I'm no the ch- minimum viable dose, right? Yeah. Like that whole mentality, I just didn't or it didn't ever click to me. And, and then now I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah, he, what did you say when, when I get naked and, and about to have sex? A girl doesn't ask me how much I can bench. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what I used to say, dude. So, I was just, I was just, and is that not true or a, what? It's a good but, argument. It's a good a, argument. I mean, at my core, I like building. I, mean, I like strength and muscle. Amongst and, the bros, you know, yeah. you, and you I'll got t- some decent I'll, numbers. I'll tell you good. what, dude. There's a few exercises that I'm that now I'm placing up at the top for mus- actual muscle builders. It's Zercher squats. Heavy farmer walks are building muscle on me, which I did not realize that they would do, but they fucking for sure are all the way up oh, my body. Yeah. Uh, 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 That's that real world strength yeah, right there. Snatch grip, high pull. Get the fuck out of here. Never thought that would build muscle in my upper back the way it's starting to put muscle on me. Like I'm putting, I'm, I'm discovering new like exercises. Yeah. And the funny thing is, again, you go back a hundred years. These are lifts that dudes fucking did yep. all the time. These yeah. kind of lifts, you yeah. know what I mean? That old wisdom. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I love that shit. Man. No, it's fun, man. It's fun to kind of look back and see like who who had it all right, and we just. I don't know. We just didn't. The message wasn't spread. You know, it wasn't popular, so it just didn't gain momentum. But you know, true, true wisdom. It sticks, man. You'll yeah. it'll come back. I have a lot of guilt that lives with me because of all the clients that I train. <laughs> I know because <laughs> all the clients I train, I just didn't. You know, it's and I thought I was good though. You know, what I'm saying I really thought. And I'm sure if yeah. you asked them, they like, found value in you. Yeah, no, I, I know I provided. I did th- that. I felt okay. Like I at least feel like for the exchange and money that they gave me, that I provided value for their life. But I feel like. Man, I could spend half the time with someone and give them so much more value than what I could back then because mm-hmm. a, a lot of what I was preaching and saying back then is so different to from how I, I communicate. I mean, I was just literally talking to my cousin. We were down in Pleasanton yesterday, and uh, you know, he's he's being straight up. He's now twenty six years old, I think, 
And he's like, fuck, he's like, cuz, man, this is the first time. And this is the one that I trained up for a, a show, so he's competed before. So he's yeah. gotten in phenomenal shape and everything like that. He's an ex-athlete, played collegiate level yeah, football. Yeah, ridiculous, like, eight-pack by the time you're done and right. getting on stage. Yeah, I remember that. So he's definitely, he's, he understands, I've taught him everything that he needs to know to get himself in shape. And he's looking at me yesterday and he goes, bro, it's just... I'm fucking having a hard time being motivated to go to the gym. And he's just like, I got, you know, it's life is hitting, them, yeah. you know, just like everybody else. And I said, man, let me tell you, I said, I, and I have my Fitbit on right now and I had it on then. And I said, I said, you know, you have your Apple watch, right? And I was, he's like, yeah. I was like, how often do you look and pay attention to your steps? And he's like, never. And I'm like, listen, you have no idea. And I know you hear the show and you hear us. And he's like, is neat that important? I'm all, listen, dude, you have no idea how inactive we have become as humans. And it's so easy and I still have, this happens to me all the time. Yesterday I had to go to the gym and actually had to do my first bout of like real cardio on the elliptical because I sat the entire day. I, it was six o'clock at night and I had 1500 steps and people don't real, like the average person should be moving at least about 10,000. And the difference between 2000 and 10,000 is like over a thousand calories mm -hmm. in my day. And I, so, and guess what you also do when you're sedentary, you make more poor choices as far as food. Yeah. You know, what people should do, they should put on a step tracker and then walk until you hit a thousand steps and realize that is nothing. Oh, it's yeah. nothing. <laughs> it's yeah, nothing. Yeah. You're literally sitting down yeah. all day. Yeah. It's crazy. That I mean, most sedentary. people, and, and most because, people do that because we're working, our brains are working. You know, and maybe our fingers are moving, and so there's a little fatigue. And yeah, so they think yeah, that, or a like, headache, oh, or I'm, stress. I'm stressed all oh day. Oh my so god, you, I got so home. I got to sit down. Yeah. Right, so you feel exhausted, and so why I why I love tools like the Fitbit or Apple Watch or things like that is just for the the reminder, the of, awareness. Yeah, the awareness. It just helps me look down. I don't. Everyone keeps asking me like, "Oh, what do you do?" And it's I'm like, I don't use it like that, dude. And who cares about the accuracy as no. long as it like is consistent? Exactly. Right? That's all I care about. I want it to give me feedback, just so because I. I really easily can think I was busy and working real hard because I feel that way because I feel exhausted. I feel I feel like a bunch of stress. So I feel like I ran a marathon, yeah. but I really haven't even moved more than a thousand steps. Yep, yep. And so I was telling him, I'm like, stop overthinking this. You're not. You're, we're not getting you ready for a show right now. You just don't want to get fatter. You're getting. You're getting out of shape, and you can feel yourself that way. And you're having trouble being motivated. And you're expecting yourself to jump back into these bodybuilder workouts that you and I were doing when we were getting you ready for a show. Which remember, we were training for over a year and a half before that yeah, happened. Yeah, you know, yeah. I built you up to that. Yeah. And and then think about it this way: we just had uh, Kristen Ulmer on, and she was talking about fear and emotions and how they get stored in the body, and if we don't let them out or if we're not in our bodies then they tend to erupt in 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 interesting ways like you know everybody knows if you suppress feelings or suppress emotions they tend to explode in ways that maybe aren't healthy or whatever now think about it this way think about all the energy that you an emotion that your body starts to store that we ignore and think about how exercise and movement allows your body to release that to shit. release it and yep. express it and to feel it because that's why we always feel yeah. so great after a lift load. that's right and let me tell you something nothing puts your you in your body and what i mean by that is sometimes here's the thing there's times when you need to be in your head and there's times when you need to be in your body and there's a very big difference between the two everybody knows like you know what that's like to be in your head because you're probably in your head not today in modern times 90 percent of the time very very small percentage of the time are we actually in our bodies and exercise does that very well when you're working out you're feeling your body it hurts pain is a great way to take you out of your head by the way if you feel pain you can't do anything but feel pain and there's a good pain when you exercise so now you've got people who are not active at all we're in our heads all day long that definitely is contributing to a lot of the issues that people are having oh, they're not sure. able to get that shit out and kids here's the thing this is what i love about children Children are like mini representation, mini clear black and white representations. Humans become, we become much more complex as we become adults. Like there's all these complexity with our emotions and you know, this, this happened in my past. It's, kids are pretty much like they're fucking tired, sad, happy, angry. Like you fucking see it. It's really clear. Whereas humans are, uh, or adults are different with kids. You can clearly see what happens when they're not able to express their body when they're not able to be in their body have a kid sit down all day long and just try and think all day long or just try and not move what do you get you get a lot of symptoms that look like add or adhd yeah. or you know you know rambunctious we used to call it or whatever yeah. you know so you can see that happens to adults too we just don't express it and you know as, as clearly as children do so that's why i think it, i think sometimes you know the why i get so frustrated or i don't like 
the hardcore hype around the motivation thing is because it's so temporary. It is so temporary, and it's it's it can be daunting for somebody who's been so busy and working and so out of shape for so many months or so many years to like think that you got to get after it and they get all this hype and they go and they crush it and it's like dude dude i was looking at my cousin i said listen bro let's say for the last month or six months you've only been averaging two to four thousand steps a day you haven't lifted any weights really whatsoever do you know what a huge accomplishment it would be this week if you just moved from two thousand steps a day to eight thousand steps every single day and go do at three days go to the gym and just squat for three sets and then go home like that would be like your body will see and start to totally in fact any more than that would be counterproductive considering right you you know i just i just had this exact conversation yesterday uh, me and Jessica were hiking uh, over there at Quicksilver, which is an easy, easy hike or whatever. And we're doing this loop and down the hill, because we're walking uphill, down the hill towards us, this lady is running. And she's probably probably early 30s. So she's she's you know relatively young. She's got her headphones on. And she's just fucking, her, the look on her face was just terrible pain. Her biomechanics, I mean, look, here's the deal. I've been in fitness for for over 20 years. I know what good movement typically looks like. I know what bad movement typically looks like. I can tell when somebody's, uh, you know, well-versed in, in something just by watching them move. And she was, her mechanics were off. She was painful, just ah, coming down. And then I watched her as she passed us. And I told Jessica, I'm like, if only she knew how counterproductive she was being, I could a hundred percent with, right. I would bet money. I would bet money right now that that woman recently decided she was going to lose weight and she wasn't really hugely overweight, maybe, you know, probably 10 pounds, 15 pounds. I could tell you right now with, with a hundred percent assurance, she probably made the decision a, a month ago or two months ago and said, that's it. I'm going to start running. I want to lose weight. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm going to do. I'm motivated. I want to get in shape and I'm watching her and I'm thinking like, so counterproductive. I'm like your her biomechanics are bad only because she's not she's never run consistently or never learned how to. She's got probably bad recruitment patterns. It's way too intense. I could tell by looking at her. Well, here's here's the correlation with the the motivation. Like I think that the majority of people that's what they think they have to do. I know. And so and we and we keep getting these these people voicing like, you know, no pain, no gain and, and, you know, making it all this mental discipline, uh, piece to it where that's the, that's the driving mechanism that we all have to achieve this, this mental fortitude and we have to bear, you know, power our way through it. When in fact, you know, you see somebody like that and the, the counterproductive, you know, efforts they're putting into it, it, it sucks. It sucks as trainers for us to see that because, you know how much, how many little like screws you could tighten up and get massive results from it versus, you know, just grinding yourself into the and ground. And make it more enjoyable. Yeah, and have it fun and you know, sustainable. Because how many people, think about it this way, how many people start working out and stop working out? You know what I mean? Of course. Yeah. Of course that woman's going to quit. If she doesn't quit, I will applaud the fact that she's incredibly tenacious. Right. But I can, I'll bet you right now, I'd bet anybody, that that woman that I watched for sure is not going to stick for it with it uh, longer than, you know, a few more months, maybe a year tops because either she'll hurt herself or she's going to find, why am I putting so much effort? Yeah, yeah, you hit a hard plateau. That's what always, they hit a hard plateau and it's a very easy decision for almost anybody. It's like, I'm starving my body. I'm pushing so hard. I'm seeing these little results. Like, fuck, I'd rather be eating all the shit I was eating before, not doing all this work and seeing, okay, so I'm a little softer. Like, that's the thought process. That's what I'm saying. If if people only knew that, if people only only treated working out like we treat other skills, like Mm -hmm. if you're, if you're, if you're listening right now and you're like, you haven't worked out for consistently. And when I say consistently, I mean for longer than a year. Okay. I know people say, oh, longer than three months. No, a year. It takes you a year to get moderately proficient at at working out resistance training, okay? That's just the bottom line. And did you guys agree? Yeah. Takes I, about a year. I right? would say at least that. Yeah, yeah at, at least. least that. So if you if you haven't worked out for at least a year consistently for a while or never, and you're hearing me right now, compare it to this. Imagine this. You've never played a day of base basketball in your life, or you've never played consistently for a length of period of time basketball. Are you going to go sign up for an advanced league and go play some crazy ass games of basketball? If, and if you do, how do you think you'll perform? Yeah. Of course not. If you were, 
if you what you're probably going to do if you're a smart person you say okay I want to play basketball I'm going to go get some instruction I'm going to practice the fundamentals I'm going to practice shooting I'm going to practice layups I'm going to practice dribbling I'm going to get little by little but get better then I'm going to sign up for a beginners league then I'm and it, you're going to progress yourself slowly well exercise is is a, treat it just like that not only is it a skill you have to learn but it also gives your body the ability to adapt over time the results are going to be way better they're going to be they're going to stick around it's going to be pleasurable and here's the thing you're going to find yourself stepping forward little by little and getting good each time and it's fun getting good at things yeah i wish we looked at uh workouts as practice and then you know every now and then you compete right so you know every like so you just practice 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 it's work you know the the work side of working out it's it's you're just putting it in you're putting it mm-hmm. in you're putting it in on a consistent daily basis and then every now and then you're going to compete you know, you pick something fun to do or, you know, you just challenge yourself and, and you press the weight a little bit. It's so funny you make that point because you just described CrossFit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what CrossFit is. <laughs> so fucking practice all day, uh, their workouts every day, and then uh, occasionally there's a – Right. Just, every, they compete and try and PR. Yeah, yeah, True. Yeah. That's they, how that's they, structured. Well, but sometimes it's I, I ran it. I that ran part it, I agree with. I ran, it, I ran into a buddy of mine, Jerry, at Gold's last night. And uh, we were talking for. Oh, a while. I know Jer- the trainer. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think he's a bad. He's a cool dude. So, yeah, and he's a badass. He's he's uh, getting he's getting ready for masters. Uh, he yeah, wants- I used to work with him at Golds. Really, really good. He's one he's of the. Dude. He's one of the trainers. There's only a couple at Golds that I would watch that I knew what they were doing. Yeah, he's CSCS, and he's got his CrossFit he knows, he knows stuff. His shit. Yeah, he knows his shit. He's a smart guy. He's a good guy. I really like Jerry a lot. Mm-hmm. So if you're listening, Jerry, much love. Um, but we were talking, and he was like, you know, he's like. We were, we were talking about CrossFit uh, and the regionals that's coming up and all this stuff like that. Yeah. And and my buddy, my other buddy Neil Maddox, and we're going back and forth, uh, talking stories and stuff. And he and he was, you could tell he was about to start sharing about CrossFit. He's like, well, I mean, I know how you feel about CrossFit. <laughs> and I'm like, no, with dude. the caveat, right? Yeah, right, right. right. And I was like, no, dude. I said, I said, you know, I know we've given it shit a lot on the show at the beginning, and that's just because there was a, a lot of poor programming. But I think we've also mentioned on the show plenty of times that. It's really come around. I mean, yeah. since I mean, just since it's evolved like dramatically. Yeah, and there's better coaches now, and there's people that see see it, and the, but and there's bad ones, just like there are in anything else, mm-hmm. right? But I said, man, I, and I looked where he was walking on the treadmill. I'm talking to him, and I said, I pointed over the squat racks, right? I'm all, I mean, I I really believe that that's because of CrossFit right there. Yeah, I said I've been in this industry for over 15 years, and for the first 10, I can honestly say there was probably months. That went by, and I didn't see a single person even use our single squat rack. Did you yeah. ever see a full good squat? Not only, never, never, I never, know. Never, I know. never. Right? Even the guys that, even the the bodybuilder guys that would come through the gym every one once in a while, and they would do the squats. They weren't even doing full squats. And then I never saw deadlifts. No, I didn't. I mean, oh, I no, didn't no, learn no. how to deadlift till way later, yeah. dude. Oh, or, I, or 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 any Olympic type lifting? Never. In fact, it was banned. It's yeah, banned in most gyms. That's right. Yeah, I was never allowed to do any of that. I I remember that now because we had a couple of platforms when I was in college and I was you know training for athletics and with the team, but I would never ever see any kind of equipment like that available in like you know one of these commercial gyms. No, I, God forbid. I, I I the first time I actually ever saw like a real squat and a real deadlift was when I when I was a kid at the Y and there was a group of old. They were probably you know they were old. I say old, but probably late forties, early fifties power lifters who were squatting and deadlifting and that really piqued my interest and then I didn't see it for a long time and then I worked at uh, when I worked at 24 Hour Fitness I had a district manager Simon forgot his last name uh, English Bulldog Cow. I used to call him no, no. not that guy okay. and it's funny you said <laughs> that I dick. almost said that <laughs> but anyway he was a uh, like a he competed in strongman events in England uh, and he was just this massive dude and I'll never forget, I walk in the back, and Hillsdale used to be, it's, it's not where it is now, it used to be where the Home, Home Depot. Depot is, and the way it worked is you walked in, it had different rooms, you'd walk in, cardio to the left, and then there was a woman's area that, you know, I never went in, and then there was machines and then free weights, and I hear, and then, like, I'm like, what the fuck is that? And I walk back, and I'd never seen anybody do a full squat, let alone a full squat with, I think he had like 500 pounds on the bar. It was like an incredible amount. Oh, wow. Damn. Yeah, and I was looking at and he was like, the guy, would look, he was like a god to me because he was so, first of all, he was my boss. He was a cool guy, but he was also a super muscular, like yeah. big dude, like the first Just real big dude. Throwing some weight on there. Yeah, like, and real I, weight. I remember him seeing, I was like, fuck. And I, and I remember watching him because the way he worked out was so different. 
the you know the way I understood lifting weights, besides that experience I had with power lifters, power lifters at one time, was like you know bodybuilders, like they're getting a pump, typically cutting reps a little short, doing lots of machines, and here's this guy, and he did, and they'll typically do you know like three sets of an exercise and just do a lot of exercises. He spent I don't know an hour and a half squatting. Mm-hmm. That's all he did, and he would he would do like a set of like two or three reps, rack the weight, and then kind of wait and chill and sit on the bench and do another one. I remember watching him being like. Is that how you're supposed to work out? <laughs> it was tripping me out, but you know that was the first time I'd ever seen anything like God, that. God, I don't even remember anything like that. I, I, the first time I ever seen anybody squat like three plates, it was a huge deal, and that was like uh, yeah. I was close to thirty, dude. Yeah. I was close to thirty years old before I ever even seen another in person. Right? Yeah. Everyone's seen strong men shit on TV and so that when you were growing up, but like. I never saw someone squat three plates in person until I was almost 30 years old. Yeah, thinking back, it was when I was trying out for San Jose State's football team, and we all had to test out on our squat, our our bench, and uh, I think it was overhead press. And no, I think it was clean. So I think it was, yeah, it was squat, overhead, or clean. Anyway, so... Basically, there was a guy there that just he he had put on over 500 pounds, and I've I'd never seen it done before. And and same kind of reaction where he got super low too because you they standardized it so at least you had to go to parallel, mm-hmm. and so they would have somebody there actually checking it. And you know, like I've seen a lot of people fake heavy weight like that before, but I'd never seen a legit squat like go all the way down to depth with 500 pounds. And this this short stocky dude just fucking like blew my mind right so there. impressive yeah. the first time you see it oh yeah and you could see that too because it translated he was a running back and so you could see just on the field how fucking powerful he was with his horse legs you know he would just <laughs> run through people and you know obviously you see you know that as he he's that strong and he's actually applying those forces into the ground of course he's going to run people Dude, over. i used to freak people out uh at when i would was a general manager because i would deadlift four plates which is not that impressive for a guy. I was probably weighing 220, and I would do them every once in a while. Just I'm naturally strong at them, and I put four <laughs> plates on a deadlift, and every even the bodybuilders would, oh shit, bro, that's a lot of weight because nobody deadlifted. Yeah, yeah, nobody would look twice if I just pulled four plates now. Right, right. You know I, what I don't mean? even know when I saw a de- yeah deadlifts. Yeah. Never, I didn't see them anyway. Oh, I, I, didn't, didn't, I mean, didn't see a, a deadlift in a gym uh-huh. ever. Ever. And I, I didn't teach it either. It was a, it was one of those ones that because I knew I wasn't mechanically proficient at it, I didn't feel comfortable teaching it. Yeah. So I didn't teach it for th- almost till I was 30. The yeah. only lift anybody cared about was bench press. That's it. <laughs> yeah. The only yeah. Lift yes, dude. Anybody gave I a mastered shit that for about. a minute. Yeah. 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 yeah that, you, was my, I think that was my thing. You got up to 400 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty impressive, yeah. uh, especially because you're natural lifetime. Did you get up over 400? Fuck, dude. I did. I, I never, did. I like, did 370 once, or something Once like that. in college, and then when I was at NorCal, uh, I was. that's when somebody first gave me the smelling salts. Uh, <laughs> and oh, wow. I was like, I was on a tear, though. I was like focusing on bench for like four months or something straight, just like making that my bitch. I, then, saw, I saw a guy once, uh, and he was, this was the craziest thing I ever saw. He probably weighed 175 pounds or something like that, and he had four plates and a quarter on each side. And I remember looking at him. I'm like, "Is he gonna, is he gonna fucking lift that? There's no way he's gonna lift that. No way." And then he gets into the bar, and I'm like, "I'm gonna get ready to lift the shit off of him." <laughs> and I thought he was gonna do one of those like little quarter reps. And this fucking dude, he gets into. He, he, by the way, he got into his position. I figured, oh, he's he competes. This is what he does. And he fucking was doing sets with that shit. I remember that just tripped to this day. I can remember what he looked like because it tripped me yeah. out because he wasn't a big dude. Oh, you wow. remember Isaac Sapawaga? Uh, oh, yeah. After a basketball game, he puts, I think it was like six or 700 pounds on the bar and just starts repping bench press. Like right in front of us, we're just. Like, I was I was most impressed. I have a very very vivid uh, vivid memory of the first time uh, I ever met him, and w- it was at Santa Teresa, and we both happened to be hitting. Who off. is this guy? Isaac Sapawaga. He's a lineman for the Forty Nine ers. Not anymore. Like not he, anymore. Yeah. He's he's over. He in, Wait a minute. Is he a Simone dude? Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit! He used to work out when I was there. Yeah, yeah. He's really? been around, yeah. He's been around. He grew up in this area. I know exactly who you're talking about yeah, because you can't he, miss him yeah. because he yeah. would lift silly. Like I thought they were fake. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's no and, way. Yeah, he moved the big weight so smooth and fast. Yeah, it like, looked like when you're warming up with like 135. Well, he, so it was just yeah, this is, this is cool. Oh we, we both we both were hitting arms on like the same day, right? Or I was doing like this bicep tricep superset, and he was, and we both had the benches right next to each other. We both just happened to be doing like dumbbell skull crushers, 
and I go to to grab like I think I was up to like 30s or 40s and I'm doing, you know, skull crushers with the dumbbells and he goes over and he grabs the 70s and I don't at this thing I think he's doing bench, right? So I'm like watching him in the corner of my eye, I'm like resting between sets. He get, he leans back with the 70s and he starts fucking pumping these tricep extensions out, right? With 70 pound dumbbells. <laughs> And that was his, then he fucking gets up, he just racks those and grabs the 90s. It was his warm up. Bro, it was his warm up, and he goes right into the 90s, like right <laughs> afterwards, dude. And the, but and he's pumping these things out like for 15 reps, dude, like full range, everything. So crazy. I, and I remember just being in awe of seeing it. I mean, that was before we played, remember when we played ball with all those guys? Because um, we closed down the gym and uh, we played with, you know, six or seven of the 49ers. And I remember just seeing that was the first time I had ever experienced uh, the people that athletic and me competing against them. Now I had guys that we went, mm-hmm. we had a couple of friends, a couple of friends that went pro when we were in high school to the NFL. I had some buddies that were pretty good ball players and hung in there in college, but not at this level yeah. and not all, that many at the same time and like competing against them. And it was my, my first, and that's where I honestly, like when that, like the genetic thing really went off in my head, like, there is a difference. Like yeah. it's like and there, <laughs> yeah, when you're there and you visibly see it and you can see somebody actually run a four three forty and everybody says that shit, right? Until you literally are there and you right see somebody it. actually do it. It's like watching fucking lightning. <laughs> well, <laughs> you just don't understand it. Right, because you've never seen anything I've like never that. Before. Seen, and I have never seen it again. Four three happened one time and I was at a combine and this kid uh, I have, uh, dude, I just have this vivid memory of when he got up to the starting line, he's all in position. And then right when he made his first move, it was like, boom, and he was gone. And it was just like the stride, everything, the technique was just so fucking flawless that like to reproduce that, I thought was impossible. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's, that, that's the level of a 4-3. Four, 4-4, three. Four, four, you know, like you could you could talk shit and like say like Deion Sanders or somebody. Like I feel like a Deion Sanders, he was like a 4 Four, maybe he did a four three. I don't know what he ran. I don't know. His, I don't know his numbers. You would know call my numbers better than I would. Yeah, very, very like Sanders. a four three is a fucking like, uh, it's 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 so like impressive. Wasn't though. Barry Sanders a, a like a four three runner? I don't know if Barry was. Barry was Barry was known for his ability to cut like oh, left to right, okay, but okay. better than almost anybody yeah. ever, right. and would argue yeah, his would be, movement. Just, it, wanna, it was, was all about his movement. <laughs> I, was like, I know, like, like Barry really, Sanders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just want to contribute. Although to he was fast, he was the, a, arguably the most athletic. You're, you're, uh, fa- you're fast. Yeah. The fastest players seen. in the NFL are typically your wide receivers and your corners. Yeah. Yeah. So those yeah. are the guys. Dion that, was one of the fastest in the game. There yeah, for a minute. There's, yeah. And I don't know. I, I don't know who the fastest in the game is right now today. I, I should know. I know I've heard it. I don't know off the top of my head. There was a guy back. Doug, would you Google? fastest NFL player today. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. I was I in, watch their 42. I was at the Arnold Classic. This is probably I'm probably in my late 20s, early 30s, first time I'd ever been to it and there was this booth with this arm wrestler, skinny black dude. And when I say skinny, I mean probably 140 pounds, maybe. Oh, wow. Yeah, like wow. like he's a, like like, like you see bones. Yeah, he's not yeah. a there's nothing. Like there's yeah. no there's no muscle on the guy. He's just really skinny and wiry. He has an arm wrestling table set up. And a, oh, he's arm wrestling. a line of people. Yeah. Remember, this is the Arnold Classic, so it's a bunch of fucking meatheads. Big ass bodybuilder dudes. Everybody big ass <laughs> arm. Not a single person. Oh, yeah. Tyree Kill. Yeah, there it is. Everybody outweighed him by uh, probably, uh, you know, 50 to 100 pounds. 4.24, 4, Justin. That's fast. That's fast. What? 4.24. Yeah. That's fast. That exists. Yeah, right there. That's real. Wow. So he had a line of guys, meatheads, roid heads, everybody, and just one after another, boop. Next, boop. Next, boop. and he was just beating. Nobody beat him. He beat. He must have gone through fifty fucking people. How long was his arms? He was a. If you if you looked at the guy, mm-hmm. I mean, who does he look like that we know? All know, so I can picture this dude. Bro, what? I don't know. He's just, like a Mike Salemi. No, Mike Salemi looks like he. This he's, guy was just like a. Kind he's white. He's thinner than Mike. He's like a skinny. He was a skinny black dude, and wow. I don't know who it was, but he was just fucking wrecking people. Now you could see by his hand and his. He was like, it's almost like he was made out of cables. Like he yeah. was just so strong. Yeah. And there was this big dude. I remember this. After just about 30 dense. of them, after about 30 of them, there was a big guy in line. So me and my buddy Ryan were sitting there and we're like, I wait, I wanted to watch. I'm like, let's wait and see until that guy gets up to him. Mm. So he's going through like 20 people or so. Big dude comes up to him and the big guy's like, obviously a strong dude. They go, they say, go. He hits it hella hard. And the dude 
lets his arm go down a little bit. And so I'm like, oh shit, is he going to lose? He's getting him. And then he sh- he kind of shrinks up his body towards his hand and he goes, oh, right. and beats it. And I was like, what the fuck? Dude, all this, it was so cool. He's like an X-Man. All yeah. this sports talk, you guys just reminded me of something. Doug, you got to look this up. So check this out. This is a, happening, This uh, these playoffs right now. So in the NBA playoffs, they have this, uh, and I believe Intel, yes. Intel is the company that's doing this and it's VR and it's there. They have it. The cameras are set like from courtside seats, wow. so you could fucking put the VR goggles on, watch fucking oh, NBA playoffs rad. from a courtside view. So cool! How dude. fucking dope that is that, is so, dude? So brilliant! It's so VR. brilliant! Uh, that is so. I, told, I already have Katrina on it. I'm like, we have to be. We have to get this. I know. That is I so, so, have to get this. Oh my god! You're just sitting there, just you know, looking around. You know what that's gonna do to for sports? You know what that's going to do for all sports? Oh, that can brings I, a lot more exclusivity to Can I tell you something? Yeah. I don't watch sports. You guys know this. Not a big deal to me. I would for sure watch sports like that. To, yeah. to watch these athletes like- And people that well, hate crowds so court of people. So courtside seats are on a on the low end, especially for playoffs. Yeah, you're on sitting the, at on high the, level, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Uh, at your, not only are they- uh, Are you on the floor? Yeah, you're on the- yeah. That's floor, bro. That's like, this is okay. floor. So I, the ones I you saw me that I just- I was four rows back from courtside. Okay. And there's a huge difference price wise from where I was sitting oh, and yeah. courtside. It sure. goes it goes up about three thousand oh, yeah, dollars. Your feet are on the actual court. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you're trying. To, so how cool is this for some for anybody who will, may never ever experience in their lifetime what it's like to sit on sit courtside? And you'll probably be able to do that. I'm sure it's like a monthly oh membership or what fee. I mean, I'm thinking about, you know what I'm thinking so about right cool. now? That's so cool. I want that for football too, man. And oh, yeah. Look, it's jack into think, their helmets. Think about what this is going to do for fitness. For reals. Think about that. You could put these glasses on and take a class Hell yeah. with people, or you could put them on, lift weights, but then when you look around, you're in like, you know, Gold's Gym circa 1972 or some shit like that. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> it's too distracting, dude. I just fucking lift weights. Or naked chicks. Yeah, you yeah. could look around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's what you're going to end up doing. That's, <laughs> that's like a little pop-up comes in. You know, bro, <laughs> VR is gonna, literally, yeah. this is what's going to happen with VR, Adam. You're going to have like all this cool shit with VR, 90% of it, porn. 90% yeah. of people, people will use VR for porn. <laughs> They'll was, get sneakier with the was, ads, too. It'll be like an actual girl just kind of walking up like, hey. Which one of you was on telling here? me the, the, the porn thing now that they have where the girl puts the little thing inside of her, the vibrator inside oh, of her? Oh, somebody messaged me. Wow. This we were, is fucking brilliant. So, oh, so yeah, you could like shock her. Like, Ugh. No, so, yeah, we have vibrator, yeah, you know? So yeah. we were... we were uh, that By sound, tips. That sound yeah. he makes. <laughs> that's, <laughs> a be- <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. that's a fast one. <laughs> <laughs> slow it down. Sorry. You'll numb it. He, uh, so someone sent me a message that there's these sites where girls, they do the webcam, so it's like a live webcam or whatever, mm-hmm. and then they will put a vibrator inside them, Yep. and so you can see everything. And every time somebody pays... It will vibrate the vibrate. So brilliant. So now you've got all these people. It's, you like, know. A, it's like a sexual <laughs> video game, dude. Yeah. You're just sitting there, ching, 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 exactly. ching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but exactly. So brilliant. Oh, my God. It's oh, it's funny. so brilliant. That's yeah. crazy. Do you like yeah. That's insane to me. Yeah, but the, I'm, I mean, with VR, I think probably 90% of it's going to be. Yeah. To porn for sure. Yeah. So anyway, that's how, you, that's how it starts. You saw, did you guys see that Pornhub is now taking cryptocurrency, right? I yep. saw that. Yeah, yep. of course they are. That's so perfect. So yeah. obvious, right? Obvious, obvious, obvious. You don't want people to know what what you're paying for there. You know <laughs> so you know, some I was so who was arguing with me the other day. Still, people arguing about that. Oh my oh, god! Dude, oh, dude, oh, the government's trying so a, hard to go after it. Try a lot more popping up. I keep seeing. Try all companies. you want, dude. Yeah. Try all you no, want. They'll just keep. I don't coming. think they they can't stop it. But it's funny how they try to go after it. I just read an article the other day that said that the opiate epidemic, mm-hmm. the opiate crisis. They're blaming partially on cryptocurrencies Stupid. because drug because oh, drug dealers Stupid. because drug dealers opiate addiction's crypto. been going on forever, uh, bro. But what they're trying to say is we can't catch the guys as easily now because they're using cryptocurrency. Uh, <laughs> That's fucking rule number one, man. They Except will demonize. They took uh, which I, when was it? Like back when the CIA like actually spread that back into circulation here in the U.S. What? I, I just remember seeing something like that. So it wasn't even a conspiracy. Like they had proved that Bro, like the they fact brought it back. The f- yeah, the f- they brought back opium. The uh, fact that that's a criminal offense is bullshit anyways. What, that, just, Be, being somebody who's gone through an opiate addiction and know what that feels like, how shitty it feels like, you know what would have made my life even worse if someone threw me in jail <laughs> yeah. for that? Yeah. Like literally that could have 
completely changed my life. It's like I, I could have got thrown in jail for that. No, I know, dude. Like that is crazy. I mean, it's crazy that we it doesn't do, make any. If our, if, if we're re, if the if the desired outcome is to really help the person, throwing them in jail only is only setting them up for failure. Down I, the, I mean, I, fucking I think a, jail it's crazy. jail needs to be for people who are dangerous to others or to other people's property. That's it. So. It makes sense to yeah, put somebody in- sitting on oxycontins all day is not a danger to anybody no, else. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, if they prove to a be, boot on them. if they yeah. prove to be a danger to other anywhere. people, if let's say they drive under the influence, or they hit their wife, or they they're violent because of their drug abuse or whatever, well, you punish the crime, which is hurting other people or stealing other people's property, or whatever. You don't punish the what you did to yourself. That's weird. Yeah. Think about that for a second. Now, how? How fucked up and invasive and just tyrannical is that? Consider this for a second. You cannot do whatever you want to your body and your mind. Just think about that for a second. Like, I'm an adult. I'm an adult man. Right. Excuse me. I live in my body. Nobody else lives in this body. It's my body. All right? I can't do- My body. I do I, what I want. I can't do whatever I want to it. Yeah. How- and you know how accepted that is? How everybody thinks that's like not a big deal? Yeah. That is a major assault- on humanity, huge well, assault on our on liberty and our freedom. Man. Every, well, be, I Come mean, on. and I'm using humanity because when I say liberty, people, a lot of people don't understand what that means. So I'll just say humanity because I think people can feel that more. Like you are literally telling people you don't even have the right to fucking do whatever you want to your own self. Yeah. So in reality, who owns you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And you're born into that. You don't even have a fucking choice. Do you think that's that, crazy? Do you think that the like tattoos and piercings and things like that play into that as pushback? You think mm-hmm. that's our that's our natural way of oh, kind of pushing back of like constraints on that? Fuck you! I'll do whatever I want. To. I'll pierce. I'll tattoo because you can't. You have, there's no laws on that. So here I go. Maybe. I know subconsciously that was part of it for me. Just. I believe there's stata- there's statistics. There's statistics. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like gymnastics, but it's statistics. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I know there's <laughs> I know there's statistics on yeah. uh you know people that get tattoos that uh, correlate with this. I know I've read this some Well, some people there's psych there's book. one thing that I've read about tattoos and body modifications and that the more that someone will have with them, it's strongly correlated to uh trauma. Yes. Yeah. So childhood trauma is very strongly correlated to uh, to it doesn't mean it's uh, by the way, that doesn't mean mm. a yeah. it's 100 it's connected, it's just correlated. Right. Right, right, right. Some right. some psychologists will say it is connected based on the evidence. And B, it doesn't mean it's 100% of the time. Like, if you see someone with a lot of tattoos and piercings, yeah. it doesn't mean every It just sure. makes sense. I know I ran out when, as soon as I turned sure. 18, I ran out and put the worst tattoo on me, right? The only one that I don't like on my entire body. Yeah. And it really was, it wasn't because I really wanted a tattoo. Like, all the rest of my tattoos have all this meaning. The meaning behind my first tattoo was more of like an F you to my parents mm-hmm. and the idea that it's like, I can do whatever I want to myself. I'm my own man. Yeah, now. I'm an individual now. And I think that's what it always is like something that I. I, it keeps coming to the forefront. So it's like, th- I want to be an individual. Stop. You can't stop me. So this is a great topic, right? Because So Doug just pulled up a study. This is one, another one that I read that says the role of sexual abuse and the frequency of body modification. So any kind of trauma is a, so it, uh, it correlates with uh, the more body modifications that you tend to do to your body. Mm. But here's the thing, though, that we need to consider. Does that mean that all or any body, body modifications are correlated or doesn't mean that it's more than what is societally acceptable. So what I mean by that is I have one tattoo Mm -hmm. on my upper back. Today, walking around my shirt off, you see a tattoo on my back, makes me normal dude. If this was 50 or 60 or 70 years ago, I would be like, whoa, that motherfucker's a radical or what the fuck, that's so crazy, right? So I think to be more accurate, when you see someone with a level of Body modifications and tattoos that far exceeds what is considered Past the so- threshold of yes. society, right? Then I think that's probably especially face tattoos. Yeah, like yeah. like today, if you have maybe maybe fifteen. What years do you think ago, it is that's drive drives it? Now, obviously, there's always exceptions to the rule, and they're unique. But for a majority, what do you think is driving that? Then I think part of it may be so, and this is me speculating, but uh, self harm is uh, correlated to mm. or, or connected to. So it maybe the pain aspect, like hurting yourself. Mm-hmm. Part, the other part of it is, uh, you know, maybe not feeling like everyone else or displaying how you feel or having a feeling a need to express yourself. Whereas in the past, maybe you felt like you couldn't express yourself. And this is, these are all just, you know, my speculations. But I do think that there's a societal norm. And like yesterday, I was going for a walk uh, outside and there was just two kids walking by 
what the one kid had what the girl had pink hair and the dude had a mohawk with green hair it i don't even blink today when i see that it's not a big deal especially where we live like whatever right. 20, 30 years ago, that'd be a big deal. Like some some dude walking around with it with a mohawk. Your parents are kind of like, oh, watch out for that dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of interesting, right? Yeah. How that how that. Cha- so I think it's above what people consider normal. Then you may be able to say, okay, this person's isn't that trying weird? To stand I, out. I feel like that's almost the new standard, you know, amongst a lot of youth I've been seeing lately. As far as like, you know, you're like, oh wow, that's weird. They're wearing you know, a, a cropped Smurf shirt with like some crazy spiky hair and then like some goofy looking shoes and, you know, and then right next to him, you know, this guy's in a skirt with like, you know, <laughs> yeah. fishnet like gloves on. And, you know, it's, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And really it's just that it, it, it's they interesting. Push it. Yeah. They have to like push each other. And like, it's, it's almost like, I feel like the pendulum's gone so high up in that direction. It's going to come the other way. Back. It's, yeah. I 100% predict this, that in the, within the next 10 the years. The radicals will be wearing like ties and have their <laughs> yeah, hair off. No, all like nice, 100%, clean 100%, cut. I, yeah. I, I mean, I really believe within the next, we'll see it in 10 years, the next decade, we will see it be cool to not have tattoos, mm-hmm. to fucking shave, to do your hair Dude. normal or, what, or whatever normal is, right? Which is not so like, as- smell good. I right. think right. Yeah. if we- I think- I, I think if we allowed people to do whatever they wanted, so long as they didn't hurt anybody or steal from anybody. So whatever you want to yourself is fine. If whatever you want to do with other people, if they agree and they're adults is fine, as long as you're not hurting people or applying force them. I think if we applied that, we would see less dysfunction because I think like, because I, I look at it this way. When you repress something within you, it, it'll fucking come out. It'll, it'll come out. And the most, let's use sex for example. Societies that are the most repressed sexually have some of the worst sexual dysfunction. You go to some of these countries where it's illegal to have sex out of wedlock. You can get you can get killed for it. Uh, homosexuality is punishable by death, and all this other crazy. Like you can't if you get caught masturbating, you'll you'll get and you know you'll get punished. Like they treat sex very extremely repressed. That's where you see a higher instance of people having sex with goats, people having sex with children, people doing yeah. all these dysfunctional because it kind of it, it, it comes out in these re- really strange, you know, type of ways. Mm-hmm. I think with society, if we let people like, oh, you want to take drugs? Just don't hurt anybody. Do what you want. I bet you people will do less. Mm-hmm. At some, maybe more at first, but then eventually that's people exactly will start what doing less. At, yeah. at first, it'll be more. Yep. You yeah. know, at first, it'll. I think we're gonna you're we're gonna have a great example right now in the next ten years. In this is. We are look how accepted cannabis oh, has teen, become. Teen use, cannabis use with teens is, is actually starting to drop. It will first wow. time in decades. Yeah, it's not it's not cool anymore. That's right. It used oh, to be man, so like cool and legal. rebel to yeah. get high. It was such a cool and rebel thing to do. Now now it's like oh it's it's lots of luster. Yeah. It's not, if it, I mean now it makes me slower. It makes me lazy. You know you start looking at all the bad side of it now. Right yeah. before it was like. Oh, it's so dangerous. It's so cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm being such a rebel by doing it. You go to a concert and everybody's lighting one up. Like, oh my God. It's not a big deal anymore, man. And so I 100%, you'll see a spike at first because the people that were really scared to touch it or try it will and experience it. And more and more people will. And more and more people will think like, it ain't that big of a deal for me. Or maybe it doesn't affect me the same way as it affects my buddy who loves to do it all the time. I mean, I know I have a... I, I, there's things I love about it and there's things I don't like about it. I can very much so see if I allow myself to smoke on a regular basis, I'm unproductive. Mm-hmm. I'm way more productive, completely sober and not, nothing in me whatsoever and feeding my body right, training and exercising. My, I'm, have, I'm way more sharp. I get way more shit done. I take care of the rest of my body way better. But then I also see, you know, sometimes it's really nice for me to be able to take the edge off. It's nice for me to, you know what, I'm going to Think a little bit differently. Right. Yeah. And, or, yeah. and it's, it's got some, and it can be abused and overused, but, uh, you know, it's got real health, potential health applications. Mm-hmm. Like, for reals. I mean- I'll tell you what I was. You, That's what makes it cool. Oh, dude! <laughs> and it is what makes it cool is that if they, think of all the it's you know so quote unquote yeah. you know drugs right things that we've labeled well, as drugs. It, you know, it only makes sense you know that we would treat something with this kind of potential the way we've treated it for as long as we have, and and it was demonized from early on. Like the way they got it to become illegal was they they said they wrote articles and said something like. You know, uh, no joke. Blacks and Mexicans are going to smoke smoke this stuff, and they want to rape your women. This is these are the kind of propaganda that yeah, they would put out shit. to get it to get it originally banned. Then they would put out propaganda videos, which you can actually still watch. I think I forgot the name of uh, of the of the popular one. 
uh, on this on is all marijuana. back in the Hearst days, and, yeah, right? yep, the, yeah, yep. print and media. And you would watch this. You watch this video, and they're trying to depict what weed does to you. And this man smokes it, and he kills this woman. And you're watching, like they've never smoked weed in their life. They know they didn't even know how how people react. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. nobody who yeah. made this video, like like hold on a second, that's PCP. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> like, you were talking about the wrong I, thing here. I don't know what kind of weed you're smoking, but I've never yeah. seen yeah. anybody. Do yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what's that? What's that? Uh, I've seen some people on PCP for uh, madness. Do some crazy reefer madness. Oh, I think I might have seen this one before. For mad- madness will kill you, but uh, but the, the the health applications are crazy, and the government has known about. Uh, I want to see some this. of the. Uh, I want to see this. this yeah, is, and reefer. The year is nineteen thirty eight, and America's children are under siege, <laughs> <Yeah>. under siege <laughs> from, from an, an evil, evil so powerful, so frightful, so mind bug. What did it say? Mind numbingly dangerous. <laughs> they made a movie about yeah, it. Yeah. They're making fun of the trailer. Yeah, Reefer Madness. God. Oh, is this a movie? Reefer Madness was a documentary on the dangers of marijuana. Look how they're acting, right? Oh, yeah. So watch. They're all start acting like they're psycho. Yeah. Because they- He they looks have, like Igor. Yeah. Look, yeah. look, look, look. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. He's all touching himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're smoking bath salts, buddy. Yeah. You're not <laughs> smoking weed. That's what I'm saying, dude. This is, this is a different drug. You're definitely not smoking weed. Oh, he just oh, went crazy. Yeah. Uh, he sees the paranoia. He's yeah. he's he's swatting at it. Yeah, he's losing his mind. Anyway, yeah, we can watch that after. But it uh, it's it's if you watch it, you'll 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 oh, see the propaganda. Hil- that's hilarious. That was a government created or funded, you know, movie to get people to what can make never what is, what is it, what sex can make crazy s- zombies. <laughs> sex crazy. Well, I don't know. That's kind of a cool. Wow, thing. does that happen? Yeah, like and force us to kill. Yeah. Oh, so. Well, that part, you know, we can we can not. Oh my yeah, god, we can do dude. without that. No, well, so he's straight beating his what? What is most despicable danger what, facing, facing children, children today? today? It's weed. Yep, marijuana. What are you doing, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm getting high, yeah, and I'm gonna kill your mom yeah. <laughs> <laughs> later. I'm raging. Have sex with your sister because that's what it does. It makes me go crazy. That's no, funny. And say so. Uh, n- so here's the thing with marijuana. They they at first they wanted to get rid of it because uh, they was going to compete with paper. Then they wanted to get rid of it because uh, it was the counterculture drug. It's what the protesters were smoking. Mm. So they demonized it. And then they found out through that that the, some of the earliest studies done by the government showed that there was an anti-cancer effect. And we can get all conspiracy theory on that, but pretty sure, you know, if if the pharmaceutical industry is as powerful as people say it is. That it, it would see something like that as a threat because it's of a natural course, yeah. and you can grow it in your house yeah. and have access to it by a seed, dude. Come on. So here's how here's how cannabinoids work to kill cancer for what they know so far. So cancer cells have a dysfunctional mitochondria, which is the energy product producer and it's like the the engine of the cell. And cancer cells have a dysfunctional mitochondria. And we know this because when a lot of cancer cells, uh, when you take away glucose from them. They are unable to produce ketones and a lot of them die. This is why ketogenic diets for many cancers have anti-cancer effects because the cancer starve because there's mm-hmm. no there's no glucose. So they have these kind of these mitochondria that are kind of fucked up. What cannabinoids do is they cause the mitochondria to through the increase in something called ceramide in the cell, they cause the membrane of the mitochondria to become more permeable and it basically burns itself out and explodes. And this doesn't happen with healthy cells in cannabinoids. Only happens with cancer cells. So what you're doing with cannabinoids and here's killing off cancer selectively, cells. Yeah. Selectively killing off targeting cancer cells. It's so crazy. And it's the cancer cell killing itself. The 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 cannabinoid is not toxic. It's the cancer cell that then becomes self-destructive. Is it like it competes with it and then it explodes? Or no, what's it, happening? it literally it increases ceramide in the cell. That does something else, causes the mitochondria to basically burn itself out and explode and, and it's a self-destruct mechanism that happens which is supposed to happen in cells when they start to mutate but cancer cells don't do that and that's why they're cancer cells because they uh, don't self-destruct they're so fucking, it sort of activates it when it's been dormant how the time. crazy is that you, huh. have you read any stats on how crazy. common it is for someone who's been like a regular uh, cannabis smoker for their life in cancer have you read anything around that yes so cannabis smokers have a reduced risk and I don't know what the percentage is but have a reduced risk of head, neck, and throat cancers. And this is with smokers. Smoke inherently is, has lots of carcinogens in them, all smoke. So you combust and burn something, you inhale it, you're inhaling a bunch of cancer-causing shit. And cannabis smoke is no different. We know this. We can. This is why for years they said cannabis is, will cause cancer. 
it it wasn't because cannabis caused cancers because they looked at the smoke and were like, oh, look right. what's in the There's smoke. There's carcinogens in the smoke. There's more carcinogens in, in, in pot smoke than there is in tobacco smoke uh, sometimes, uh, mainly because we don't use a filter and and maybe for a couple other reasons. But what they what they what's happening is that the cannabinoids themselves are anti-cancer and they're so anti-cancer that they override the cancer causing effects of the smoke by a little bit to the point where if you're a regular cannabis basically moot not not only moot you actually have a little bit of protection wow. if you smoke and now cigarette smokers that smoke cannabis also less cancer rates also so it actually protects against that now what this tells me the cannabis consumer is well shit why don't I just use cannabis in a way that has less carcinogen so I can get more of the benefits, which would be like vaping I or ingesting. I just remembered when the like somebody had told me a long time ago, like it, the equivalent of like one joint was basically like a pack of cigarettes. And so they must have just been comparing that to the carcinogens that it puts off in the smoke. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So here's the other thing. Uh, let's say you were, and this is, by the way, this was a, a scientific article that I was reading. It's ceramide. Yeah, I'm right. So- the if you have the presence of cannabinoids in your system, low levels. Let's say you take CBD and THC, you know, over you know, kind of not regularly but semi regularly, right? So you have a little bit here and there. That should apply metabolic pressure on cancer cells, and, and that you would have, and, and just reduce risk. So if you have a little bit of cannabis here and there, you're creating an environment that's less likely to produce cancer cells because you're placing more metabolic pathways. Similar to how a ketogenic diet or fasting will do on on the body. Both also the reason why fasting and both is so- I feel should be treated yeah. the same way. Yeah. Just like I tell people, I don't think it's that beneficial to be fast intermittent fasting every single day. Mm-hmm. I think you're far better off intermittently incorporating it into your routine, whether that's once a week or biweekly every now and then, and stretching the fast out. I would recommend th- marijuana the same way too. Yeah. Yep. It's yeah. not something you want to smoke every single day and be high all the time. Fuck it, but it is something that you know what maybe have it in your life. I think once CBD. In a while. I think CBD will be the one thing that. Uh, that people will be recommended to use regularly because CBD is uh, it's non-psychoactive. It doesn't attach to the cannabinoid receptors, uh, the CB1 or CB2 receptor. But what it does seem to do is increase the either the effectiveness or the amount or the receptors that your natural cannabinoids, uh, uh, that your natural cannabinoids attach to or just increases circulating levels. So our bodies produce natural canna- uh, cannabinoids and if those levels are low or your receptors get downregulated or something happens with that, you're probably going to be susceptible to a lot of different things. In fact, they're coming up with a, a term for it, uh, endocannabinoid deficiency syndrome. And so what CBD does is it seems to increase that natural amount in your system or increase the effectiveness or how it works. I'm not quite sure. So this is why CBD has got all these medicinal properties and works on the cannabinoid system, but doesn't attach to the cannabinoids. Now, I love, I'll tell you what, my prescription for me, because I use I use cannabis, largely medicinal. Um, I don't definitely notice an, a positive effect on my gut, and I use more of it when I need it and less of it when I don't. Uh, but I also sometimes like the effects of cannabis. I, I feel more creative or relaxed or whatever. If I have a nice amount of CBD and then I have you know THC, it's like I get way more of the positives and way less than negatives. Far less likely to get like paranoid and feel anxious and shit like that, and I just feel you know, better as a result. Yeah, you know, no, I, I notice that too. I notice when the ratio is even, right? One to one is what you typically go for. Yeah, yeah. I'll go one to one or sometimes even two to one um, and I just feel better. Here's another cool uh, study that just came out recently on how cannabis and caffeine affect uh, the brain. Hmm. So they kind, they, they in some ways they counteract each other and in some ways they amplify each other. And so what the, what these studies are suggesting is that CBD or even THC may be an interesting, like, cool combination. Combo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that. It's, Have you it, noticed that? Yeah, it, what it do you, is. What do you feel from it? Um, I, I just feel it, I don't know, more energetic, I guess, with the... With sometimes when you when you have, like, uh, some good cannabis, it's like, you know, you start getting more creative and... Uh, but you get, like, a little bit of the paranoia, but you also get a little bit of, like... Um, fatigue or like i guess not being motivated Bro, to I move as much it. I, it, it's just like nice consistent energy it's it's like you're in my opinion i'm more, i personally i'm more euphoric and clear 
Mm-hmm. So I feel so I feel like it enhances. So it doesn't take very much. So like one of my favorite things in the world is on a Saturday or Sunday being up in Tahoe, being on over on the lake or the water, or just and it not it having anything that I have to do or would be anything sitting out on a deck or whatever and just enjoying the sunset or enjoying the view and a cup of coffee and two hits of a joint. It's and I am. Is just it's a right as rain. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. That is a yes. Right bend, as rain. Bend the right. spoon. And and they're finding that they that there's some synergistic stuff that's happening with them. And this study is kind of starting to make the rounds. There's definitely a unique feel to it, though. Anybody that's it's ever, an interesting yeah, combination. Every, mm-hmm. Anybody that has ever had. I mean, we. I remember cannabis combines with a lot of when we first started things. traveling and doing our our tour. When we were down in Newport, you remember I did the post Except on the crack. OG plus cold brew when, yeah. we were, when we were on that kick for a minute, like. There's definitely something there. There's something there that I think is pretty cool. It doesn't take very much. I think I think where a lot of people make mistakes with cannabis is thinking that you need to have a lot of it. This is also why I'm so jazzed about what we're doing with um, dosis and stuff because they're the first pen to actually measure the dosage for people so people can actually start to be a little more intelligent about dosis how they- Dosis is brilliant. No, it's brilliant. It's brilliant because one of the big problems with cannabis is as a medicinal uh, for, for medicine- is that it, the dose is hard to to gauge because mm-hmm. if I'm smoking flour, you know, which is the the dried plant or whatever you call it, flour, right? It's uh, it can be twenty percent THC, it can be twenty six percent THC, it can be twenty eight percent THC. It can b- depend on how I inhale it, how it was lit, other cannabinoids, all the stuff, and so. To treat it like medicine in the Western medicine sense is difficult because Western medicine tries to be precise. Mm-hmm. You know, 300 milligrams of ibuprofen, 100 milligrams of this, or one gram of that. It's hard to do with when you're smoking weed. And so what Dosis did is they, and they, I know exactly what they did. They looked at the the inhaler model. So mm-hmm. when you when you use an asthma inhaler. They're metered out doses so that every dose is it's more consistent. It's very consistent. It's three 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 milligrams of albuterol or whatever dose they use. So with doses, you breathe in and it shuts off when it gives you the you know one point seven milligrams. And they of patented THC. that, bro. And they patented yeah. it. Yeah, no, it's, it's brilliant. brilliant. Have you see, you guys see the very smart. have you guys seen the where we're gonna be at with him? Just Taylor showed you. No. Oh, oh, it's cool. So I just just I was actually just reviewing that with him. Um, so we we go in two weeks, right? We so next week we're in Austin. This is the, the one that's in San Francisco. No, no, no. Dosis is oh, down down L.A. Yeah, we're gonna okay. down. I think we're on Malibu. We're like off the of Malibu Beach area. We've rented this fucking this mansion, and it's gonna be a private uh, party for th- about thirty yeah. people. And they're setting it up. So Dosis is setting it all up. Beautiful house, right? It's, the layout's sick. And they have what, you know, they call them, uh, oh, Taylor's going to give me a hard time because I'm going to fuck this up. But it's, they have like a, a fancier name for bud tenders, basically. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, These, yeah. They're, they're like health specialists, something. I forget what they call them, right? right. But they're going to be set up in the house with all the different, all the different strains and all the, oh, all the different shit. kind. Yeah, yeah. And teach This is so and so we're gonna cool. be able, we're gonna be able to go around and just kind of like and all Educate of our you on the, the people that we invite there yeah. will be able to try it all out for free and they'll Dude, be so you know gift what? bags. For I hope people. they I hope they I'm sure they know of course they know their shit that's their that's their company. Yeah, I've been just I hate I hate one of the things I hate the most is I'll talk to somebody who works in cannabis. Oh God, I start talking to them and then yeah. it's like I'm asking you questions and I know more than you do about your product. You need to know more than I do. So, so I you know this is how yeah. how Mark and I killed it right when we first got involved in all this stuff was. We went around. So before we even started our first two cannabis clubs, I probably toured, I don't know, 20 or 30, somewhere in that range of clubs all all over LA area primarily because that's where most of them were at. This, but at this time, the Bay Area, NorCal, nobody has them yet. This only LA has, has started off with the cannabis clubs. And we went to all of them. And I remember telling Mark, like, dude, are you kidding me? Like... Like, this isn't for someone like me or you or like a, bunch a of idiots. Yeah, old lady who really needs this shit or like like this is literally just drug dealers selling to their clients, yep. you know, legally. Mm-hmm. Like that's all that's going on here. And it's ran that way. Yep. You walk yep. in, it's shady as fuck. There's this huge jacked out bodybuilder yep. on steroids yep. who's like, you know, takes your card and there's somebody else behind the desk gets yep. their hat backwards and looks like they're Dreadlocks. stoned. Yeah, yeah, I'm just like Dude, we're, you're, they're trying to make this hey, move in the direction of like a medical place. This is not like that at all. No. So when we started ours, like, I mean, we made sure there was no security. Like, we don't we don't need security. Like, this is a, we don't need to do that. We'll have our cameras. We have all that stuff like that. Like, I'd rather just 
make this more welcoming for some seven-year-old lady who's going to come calling in here with arthritis right. one day and I, not make her freaked out because you know what i'm like a business person too because i'm thinking like those are the clients that are going to consistently come back when you of start they are. treating them and changing their life or helping them out with something like that and you make them feel comfortable about yep. the process and they probably already feel a little bit like self-conscious about the fact that they're walking in to buy weed and you're right. gonna have a fucking massive bouncer. stigma behind it yeah already. you're gonna have a bouncer there who's gonna you know check their id and look at them yeah. like you better not you know. oh, so mark yeah. we used to him and i used to dress sharp to work and clean shaven and we had a cute little like friendly front desk girl when you came in there was no like crazy security the lobby was set up like a medical office and so we did this and nobody was doing this yet yeah they all were super shady and backdoor and that's part of what made us crush was once people found and then you get people like mark and i who are helping and then we were like him or like or like me and him both are both like this where we get into something we're going to dive deep into it we're yep. learning like crazy so you know we were able to teach people what we knew which was more than any other place i've been to because like you're saying i go to these butt tenders and i ask questions and i'd be like well i can't learn anything from these fuckers these guys don't know anything there's a bunch yeah. of stoner kids that wanted a job at a cannabis club they don't know. there's so much science that's involved and so many intricacies and differences and it's it's a it's fast it's a fascinating subject i mean i got into it Deeply because I had, uh, you know, uh, I had a, somebody close to me with cancer, and I and they were terminal. There was no, there was no treatments. There was nothing that Western medicine can do. It was done black and white. This person is not going to survive. The odds are, you know, less than you know three percent that they're going to survive. And so I went and I went crazy. And I'm the kind of person like, I can dive very deep into things. I can become very fanatical about things when I'm into them. I find this subject fascinating. But on top of that, I was extremely motivated extremely driven because I wanted to find something that would help this person who was very close to me. And I looked, and I, you know, of course, if you go online and you look up potential cancer treatments or natural cancer treatments or you know Chinese medicine cancer treatments and Ayurvedic medicine cancer treatments, you're going to get a lot of fucking bullshit. I mean, people prey on on people like that, like you have no idea. So I'm reading all these things and I was like, you're going to get the people that drink urine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And yeah. I'm, I'm like this, I need, I need something with at least some kind of evidence, whether it's like lots of anecdote, like uh, chaga, for example, the, the mushroom chaga, there's lots of evidence, uh, anecdotal evidence from, uh, you know, Chinese medicine and, you know, uh, Eastern European medicine that chaga helps with cancer. The funny thing is now we have studies that actually show it fights cancer. This is why you are so excited to get four sigmatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I want fucking four sigmatic. Exactly. So I so but so chaga, but then cannabinoids. I'm reading these animal studies and then I'm reading these population studies and I'm like, holy shit, this has this is real evidence. And then uh, I started digging deeper and I discovered that pharmaceutical companies are investing in in pharmaceutical drugs that are based on cannabinoids as treatments for cancer and pharma pharma companies are not because that's billions of dollars they're not going to spend money on shit that they're just pulling out of thin air especially when no, they were spending cancer. huge money because they were having to do it overseas so they didn't yeah. get in trouble for all the yeah. laws over here too yeah. so you knew that it was fucking- and then israel was doing all this science a lot of the science coming out of israel because they actually they treat it you know much less stig stigma there than it is here and i'm reading all this shit and i'm like and i went in deep and I learned about all this crazy stuff about cannabis and it really tripped me out and really it's not that you know because I know people I, like they they personify marijuana like it's some fucking god or it's like oh the weed like here's uh, the deal yeah. the cure all Here, here's what's fascinating it's not the plant of cannabis Th I mean yes that's fascinating but that's not what really blows me away what blows me away is that we have this cannabinoid system in our body that we didn't know very much about we only recently discovered some of these new you know endocannabinoids mm -hmm. that's fascinating to me now of course if you want to make it sound how like large it is is fascinating how how it's a it's like a circuit breaker in the brain check this out the way neurotransmitters travel between synapses is from presynapse to postsynapse okay that's how they that's how they are so that so serotonin goes through it tells the postsynapse what to do or what the what the, so it's a signal sending mm -hmm. from you know like mm -hmm. a, i'm the mailman you're the mail receiver that's presynapse, postsynapse, okay? Cannabinoids are, uh, communicate retrograde. They go from postsynapse to presynapse. They go backwards. Hmm. Now, why are they going backwards? Because they're regulating. Giving feedback. They're yeah. regulating. They're literally telling the presynaptic you know, neuron, it, we need a little bit more of that, mm -hmm, a little bit mm -hmm, less of this. Mm -hmm. And so it's, 
it's, it brings equilibrium. It's right. like a balancer in the body. That's why if you have- What like, other things work like that? So crazy. In the I, I, you know, the natural cannabinoid system. I don't know too many other things. I'm sure there are other things. And I do know that there is some communication from post to pre, but the fact that cannabinoids, like that's directly how they work. Mm-hmm. It's fascinating to me and the fact that it's a regular and now it makes sense when you look at studies and you see this study shows that AIDS patients uh, with a compromised immune system benefit and live longer when they use cannabis. Oh, but however, these studies over here show that people with autoimmune diseases or issues where their immune system is hyperactive, the cannabis brings it down. So on one end, it boosts the immune system. On this hand, it depresses the immune system. Yeah. How is that possible? Well, don't we have self-regulating systems everywhere? You yeah. know, like even just pain, like that's going to get me to stop what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. No, and, I mean, it's just working with the body's, what seems to be one of the largest regulating systems in the body that keeps things in balance. Mm-hmm. And that's what's fascinating to me. And that's why when you hear all these claims that can, cannabinoids have potential to do everything, and you think, how can that be possible? Well, that's one of the reasons why it's possible. It's like balances you out. If your immune system is depressed, it boosts it up. If it's too high, mm-hmm. it brings it down. If you're, you know, uh, it, look at look at its effect on fat loss. I, I called this, you know, a long time ago. I told you guys, like, if we ever sell a supplement, it should be a cannabis-based, the cannabinoid-based one. Because for sure, cannabinoid-based fat burners are going to be a big thing. They're already oh. starting to be a thing. Oh, 100% it's going to be a big thing. The only thing that I, I remember we all agreed on is just like, it still falls in the category with almost every other supplement. It's not It's not even in the top 10 yeah. list of things that are going to really change people's yeah. lives. When you talk about the things that we know that we can, and I think that was why we didn't. As far and as it, it was super expensive. Oh, yeah, you know? we did. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. It's probably going to take a while for that cost to go down. So. Super expensive, because especially with CBD, you have to get it from hemp, and that's a mm-hmm. more expensive that's process. Gonna, it, that'll change, though, with like, well, we'll see, though, because how what they do with regulation. This is a thing that I think is crazy, too. So, Yeah, because you my, know Trump said, Trump told his guys, we're going to find a path for the states that legalize it to, to let them do that. Did yeah. you hear that right? Mm-hmm. So it's like the steps are it's starting yeah, to at first we were getting worried because he was coming after, but now he's backing off the medical use. No, that was his, his the guy that works under him. I can't remember. So name. where, no, I, where the big regulation is going to come in is here. So right now the, the biggest breakthrough in like the underground world of, of cannabis is the, the process of making clear. And it's the finest- uh, Shatter, clear. Beyond that. Oh, so this is- 100% pure. They call, 90, they 99.9%. They cl- is it clear? They call it clear because it's clear? Yeah. Oh, shit. You I've never see seen through. that. It's, you've extracted everything. There is no plant matter. There's no garbage. There's nothing bad in it. It's completely pure. And so they- they have, they're turning it into a, dr- a, pharma, a pharma drug. Yes. That's what they're doing. Yes. And so this is already happening on the black market, but yet it's, and it's, so people that are doing it, right? So this is the evolution of what we started years ago. And mm-hmm. I know it's crazy. Like I bet uh, people that are, know, understand cannabis and putty earwax and shatter and all those things like that. Like uh, the people that I was involved with in the Bay Area were the first to really start all that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we evolved much of that at our club way back when. And now I've seen, and I've watched now my cousin and family and friends that I know that are still in the industry evolving it even further. And they have these huge ops now where they're producing this. So that will become the standard, but they will, because you have to, like, the extraction process looks like a fucking chemistry lab. I mean, it's crazy. They're making it a a pharma drug. That right there is what's going to. That'll be regulated heavily. Hundred yeah. percent. They're gonna regulate the fuck. Because you of- could smoke a bunch of herb, you know, a bunch of flour, or you could fucking hit that shit, and that's gonna be more of the addiction, more of the withdrawal, more of the. Like I've never. Have you guys ever dabbed? Yes. I've no. never dabbed before. No. <laughs> you have. Oh, oh wow. yeah. No, of course I have. I mean, yeah. I remember. I remember when I that. I have no desire to. I remember when that first came on this. Well, you remember if I was. You were testing everything. Yeah, you know? I was part of the people who started what you would dab. Like there was nothing to dab. Just sure. ten years ago. So sure. when you when earwax, putty, honeycomb, all the shatter, all this stuff started coming about, now they they were looking for other ways to to burn it or smoke it, and it was such a hard thing to mess with. And I don't know who came up with the idea of heating up a nail and then really really just hot, vaporize the fuck and then out it vaporizes it. it, then you draw straight off of it, and that's this this huge scene of dabbing exploded. Super super like it'll get your blood concentration of THC up faster and higher than anything. Well, to give you an idea, like I remember the first, uh, you know, we were also the first to test all this stuff. So um, when you look at the the highest grade cannabis, um, 
it normally is about 20 to 25 percent thc and that's in 25 is crazy mm. and so uh that's a flower right so that that's about as high as a natural flower gets even if you're if you're at the, the i've top. seen a few 28 but what well else? no yeah. the ones you see in the clubs that say that are bullshit those are that's th that's th uh thca okay and that's not the that's okay. not the standard for like what how strong okay, it, okay. it is that's the guys at the clubs they put that on there so they can say they oh, have okay. a stronger weed but real Primo, top grade, the best grown, yeah, best twenties. Yeah, okay. or, yeah. So that's your for a flower. Then, then, then we and we've been doing hash for a very long time. Cold, you know, cold press hash has been around forever, um, and that's like you're pushing twenty eight to thirty two kind of range. Mm-hmm. Maybe some of your best hashish is hitting thirty five or so THC levels. And that's been pretty much it as far as a concentrate for a very long time. And hash is like, we used to be for like the hardcore people, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Because it was so strong. Because people with was, the highest tolerance. Yeah. Because back then weed was only coming out at like nine, 12%. So it was like double of mm-hmm. what we, weed would be. Well, so now they we've learned to take it and extract it even further. And so when we first did the first rounds, which we used to call uh, earwax or putty before uh, all the other stuff, the other kinds came, we tested it. And I remember it was nuts because ours came in at 62% and nobody had seen anything like this yet. Like nobody had seen something this strong. And I remember we would just like barely sprinkle a little bit of it on a joint or put it in with a bowl and, and then smoke it. And it was like, holy shit, this is so strong. And I remember how strong that was. Now that's at 60 something percent. So before, when I left out of the industry, uh, we were up to producing stuff that would rank, I think the highest I think we peaked out was like about 78%. And that was like when we were, we evolved it to honeycomb. We were doing honeycomb and shatter before it was even called honeycomb mm-hmm. and shatter. And that stuff was pushing 78%. Now, since I've left, I've been gone and my cousin and people have continued to evolve the process and they've learned more and there's more science behind it. Now there's more tools that you can actually buy and equipment that actually helps you do all this process. We're up to being able to extract it 100% into this process that makes what's called clear now. Fuck. And it's- Yeah, so I have no desire because I do five. I do not like- <laughs> Think of the strongest weed you ever smoked. I know you don't even like uh, super stro- super no, strong weed. That's five That's times the strength. Immediate panic. <laughs> it is. Is that what happened when you, yeah. when you did the dab? Oh, yeah. When you dab, like my head would go, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, it was, it's not like a normal high, dude. It's psychedelic. It's Yeah, it's way too heavy. Unless you're somebody, and, and the people like- you know, my it's it's hard for me to watch like my little brother who I know uh, like dabs on a regular dude. It's his tolerance day. is too high. Yeah, really. here's what happens when your tolerance is getting high like that. You've you've down regulated the fuck out of your cannab your your cannabinoid receptors, and your body's probably producing less of its own natural cannabinoids. So you've developed a, a legit like dependence, and that's not a good thing. It's not smart. And you know, it's funny with cannabis and kids when when they do tests, and it's pretty. The evidence keeps coming back. Kids who smoke a lot of weed in their adolescence suffer from permanent uh, damage to their IQ. Mm -hmm. Their IQs are are typically lower consistently as a result. And that's because the developing brain Mm -hmm. as you're growing up probably- Creating those neural pathways. And and, and you need like- those cannabinoid receptors to be good and healthy. And if you downregulate them because you're smoking all the time or you're just flooding your brain with cannabinoids, it could influence the way your brain develops. Mm -hmm. As an adult, this doesn't seem to be the case. Yeah. So it's it's pretty crazy. But no, I have no... And the funny thing about cannabis is of, you know, of the substances I've tried and that that kind of stuff, cannabis sucks when you do too much. Yeah. It's really bad. Yeah. You know, we talk about everybody... But I could see now where I... It is not a fun why, thing. Uh, why it is, is going to get pushed and it'll, it will go to where it's at and why it, it is an amazing <laughs> thing is I could definitely see somebody who is in unbelievably chronic pain or... For some, sure. Right? I could see someone like oh, that. It's, it's, it's got to be... Then you would want to be taken to a whole other planet. Of course. Right? Like that. Mm. At that point, you want to be feel out of your body as much as you can because your body feels so Plus, terrible. Plus, if you have something like... If you are treating something like cancer and you want the anti-cancer effects... Yeah, the higher dose for sure. Yeah, right? what they do with that is they give people mm-hmm. uh, a highly concentrated oil that you eat. Yeah. And the reason why they eat it is obviously you don't want smoke, but also because... When you eat it, your liver converts the yeah, THC. More of it. Yeah, it converts the THC to a uh, a, a more potent, longer lasting form. Well, you, which is your probably your better. body absorbs almost double the yeah. amount than when you smoke it. Yeah. When you smoke yeah. it, your lungs only get like I think the, I think it was uh, I want to, don't quote me on this, but it's like eighteen to twenty percent is all you you actually yeah. absorb into your bloodstream when you smoke. Plus, you, you hit a certain it. limit. You can only get so high. You can only reach a certain level of of blood THC levels through smoke. Because it, your body gets rid of it at a certain speed, right? It's flushing it out. But when you eat it, you could you could I way mean, over. Here's the deal: yeah. I've smoked too much weed. 
that sucks. I've also eaten too much weed. Way worse. Yeah, that, <laughs> way worse. <laughs> yes, that'll get you by the balls. Yeah, remember that time? That, that's why I don't. Oh, that like, was just one time. I that's like I don't. Like I don't like edibles. Now I love the ones that we have and the ones that we took. Yeah, mild five milligrams. Well, because they're dosed. Yeah. You know, and when again yes. when we started, consistency. Okay, so doses, okay, back then, so it wasn't you didn't break down milligrams of of the weed or the chocolates or anything like that. It was literally like a one doser, a two doser, a four doser, and that was kind of the standard. Like nobody had. Yeah, any, you don't know what the fuck was in a dose. No, no, and it was so just, this guy's like, yeah, this is this is a <laughs> dose for me. Yeah, this is a four dose. Yeah, dice. That was. Um, I remember I told you guys that story the first time that they I tried like this. Uh, this uh, coffee that was infused with it, right? And the guy was like, oh yeah, no, it's real mild dose. It's a single dose. It's a single doser. And I'm like, okay, I can handle, handle a single dose. I knew that if I did a two dose or a three doser in that, at that time that it was like too much for me. Oh, bro. <laughs> it was so bad, dude. Oh, it was so bad. I'm like, man, these guys are idiots. This was a, <laughs> yeah. It's a vendor. It's he was my, a whole day. He was a yeah. vendor coming to me to get me to carry his product in our, in our, in our yeah. club. And like he gives it to dude, me. Dude, it's so terrible. No, even if you know... That you're not going to die, because I've been there. Yeah. What happens is you get so out of your mind, but it also triggers the fear parts of your brain. Yes. It, it actually does this. Of what's to come. So then what happens, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I start to get these repetitive thoughts. Like You can't stop the loop. Yeah. What if I... <laughs> it just keeps going, and it ramps and ramps and ramps, and then you're like, I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? And then people are like, this is where people end up in the ER. Oh, oh the- dude, I got to tell the story. So this was early mind pump. <laughs> I wish I knew the episode. It was, well, it was the first studio. Oh, I wish we never, I We never released I that, wish that, that, well, that, that third one. Well, we did one before that, no, we did we started it. one. No, well, we did release it. We released it because you were so paranoid about it. But, we just ended but the episode. Sal and I were like, you were fine, bro. You were totally fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, so you paranoid. You got up. You remember he pushed the mic away and oh, he's like, no. we can't air that. No, he yeah, stomped yeah. off. So yes. here's what happened. Yes. We all I thought had, everybody was out to get me. We all had an edible. And at this time, Justin had extremely low tolerance. His tolerance is a little higher now. But yeah. was, he couldn't even oh, handle a five milligram. Nothing. No. So we, no, I we, never did. we all had an edible and uh, we started getting giggly and we recorded this podcast and it was hilarious. And we were laughing and Justin was laughing. And me and Adam are laughing at Justin because he's he's making jokes and it's a great episode. Yeah. Like the vibe was amazing. It was really funny, but but then we got into this laughing fit. Me and uh, Justin got in this laughing fit where oh shit, we need to stop laughing because the podcast is gonna. Go yeah, we shit. have to like keep carrying this. So what yeah. I did was I turned my head and I was looking at Adam while I was laughing because I don't want Justin to see me laugh because it would trigger him. Yes, <laughs> but Justin interpreted it as me and Adam were laughing at yeah, Justin. Yeah, like oh no, they're turning on me. <laughs> And then I got, and then and then that loop kept going, and I'm like, and it kept ramping. He was like, so mad at us. You remember like, these that guys? Was, as soon as we these guys up. are exploiting me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is gonna be one of those things. It's gonna last with me forever. Is that you what know? you were thinking? Yes. Because I know me and Adam. I was looking at Adam laughing. I don't oh, want you to said, see I, me, dude. I couldn't breathe. Yeah. I, one more. I like put it out here, and I just was like trying to like you know gain con like like this like ground myself again in reality and i was just <laughs> like oh my god i just got to get out of this he just all of a sudden he's like he, this is what he did i remember dude i remember yeah, i like, totally remember you, you, you said this push the mic away. yeah but uh. you said this you said i can't do this anymore and you pushed it forward <laughs> and then he got up and left yes. yeah, yeah. he got up and walked i out. had to go for a while it's sound no no we're laughing because yeah. we see him right we're yeah, like yeah. no no no, it's okay bro. Like, good. bro we're not no laughing fuck you guys i'm out of here and he went and walked up and down Lincoln That's Avenue. That's right, I was so mad. Yeah, he went and paced like yeah. fucking oh, four like, times. You, know, you guys was like legit. Can, cannabis has definitely, definitely contributed to some of our creative moments, but it's also contributed to some of the oh, stupidest the ideas. Real. I don't think we ever shared with the audience we our, did our dumbest ideas. I remember <laughs> talking about this. Uh, I forget where we were. We are in Tahoe. It was Tahoe. Yeah. We, so in Ta- I, Doug I, pulled him up to this day. To this day, which by the way, I, when Doug the comes back in, when ever. Doug comes back in, I do want him to pull these up because I don't remember the names. Of oh them. my god, we but can't we read them on air. We, yeah. Yes, we have to for our audience. Terrible. This you is it's four twenty. We'll special. put a little disclaimer on this episode, maybe. Doug! So when we when we when we were in Tahoe, okay, this was last year for the, the Spartan Championship, where we'll be out the same house. We'll be out. It's pretty cool. Uh, we were out there and it was, you know, we'd worked all day and we were tired. We were all kind of you know, sitting down. We were in that, that little room and we were watching Shark Tank. And that was a great oh, conversation. Yeah. Oh, dude, I wish that was recorded. I told Doug, I was it like, was such a great conversation. But you did, we, we got was, into Taylor and his business. Everything. And well, everything. What, what yeah, started we it, really well, well, we were laughing so hard that night that I pulled a rib. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For real. So. Well, because we hadn't, we had, at that point, okay, so we're, we're a little over two years into the business, right? And, you know, for the most part, we've put our head down and just kind of kept going going towards everything. And there's so much more to build. And that's just, we've been focused on 
forward, 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 that we really hadn't had any time where we kind of sat and reflected on like, hey, where are we at right now? And kind of just had some loose conversation instead of like this business talk. We need to do this. Yeah. We got to do that. It was just like mm, reminiscing yeah. on stories. Right. And I remember because we talked about the, like we had never done any marketing or any advertising. And the first time that we ever tried something and it was Justin's idea. And I remember, <laughs> I remember being in that other studio. So this is the same studio that we're talking about where he got, he walked, stomped out and was high. He comes walking in one morning and he's like, fuck, I have a fucking brilliant idea. Uh, right. And he like sits us all down. We sit down and we all were like, holy shit, that is smart. I sold it really hard. You know what, Justin? Yeah. You don't give yourself enough credit. You're a closer. Yeah. <laughs> closed I know. I just us. don't have to talk about it. Yeah. You closed yeah. us. Yeah. Well, I'll yeah. close you guys on that. He knows how to hard. get me because he came in with the numbers right away. Like yeah. he came right around and he was just I like, had to. I know yeah. Adams. He's yeah. like, he started breaking down like the price per click. On porn. On porn. Yeah. And it is unbelievably low compared to anywhere else. Here's the rationale. The rationale is everybody looks at porn. They get way more views per minute than most websites. That's a fact. You're going to get a lot of eyes on your stuff. And it's cheap as fuck to advertise on porn. And our show was, you know, we're rated R anyway. Well, that's back then. Like, yeah, especially uh, back then. Yeah, like if, if any of you guys have unfortunately gone back and listened to some of these oh, God, earlier episodes, terrible. like literally it was it was one of those things I felt like <laughs> we were challenging ourselves as far as like how we can stretch our boundaries how far and, we and our comfort it. levels, you know? And so we would come up with topics that really- definitely accelerated my divorce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We were trying to just like, be shocking hey, and, remember the and picture? crazy. Remember the picture oh, that Sal God. freaked out? You had to take oh, yeah. down. Yeah, oh, so I put my, my two fingers together, like in the peace sign, and then like stuck my tongue through. Right? Yeah, like like yeah. I was yeah. it? No, Actually, Sal no, did, you did that. Sal I did, did that. that. That's right. I, I, oh, it was the funniest. You picture. posted it because yes. back then you were managing the IG page. Yes, <laughs> Which, by the way, <laughs> if you go way back on the IG page, <laughs> can, oh, that's another thing you we can, went through. If you can clearly see when Justin was running, when Justin was running, it's 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 very visible sign. Oh, it's fucking hilarious. I'm so glad we didn't delete it, yeah. you know, because I thought about like now that it's cleaning it up, yeah, whatever. cleaning yeah. it up. No, I'm like, no, no that's no, so no. great. I got like, a post for you. No. Go scroll all the way down to the bottom and look up the one where I posted the. Uh, it was animation for suppository oh instructions. My God, I can't believe you posted that. <laughs> That's why favorite. did I post that? I but that's no why this is why we thought it would be a brilliant idea. Like, okay, if there if there was there's no other fitness health podcast that could get away with advertising on a porn yeah. Yeah. and so a porn site. And so I thought that was brilliant. And with the, the price per clicks, I thought, why not throw a couple grand at it? Let's see what right. happens. So so here's the rationale. And you exactly. know what's funny? Terrible idea. Terrible idea. But brilliant. Ways of applying it. So let me explain what I mean. Because we were actually trying to be smart about it. So we're like, okay, let's think. When I watch porn, like I don't want to click on something else, right? Unless it's, it's more it. porn. <laughs> like I'm not going to click anywhere unless it really. Do we have gets the titles? Do we have the titles that we Doug, came up with? Doug has them somewhere. Oh God, these are Doug so has them somewhere. Bad. Oh, please tell me you have those. Titles. So so incredible. Because okay, vulgar. now remember what happened was this: was Justin does this whole presentation for us, and we're all yeah. sold. I mean, yeah. even including Doug, and Doug's hard to convince sometimes. You know, yeah, Doug's yeah. like, okay, this yeah. actually sounds kind of smart, guys, <laughs> right. right? And so we all give each other our first set of homework. You know, this is like the first time we ever <laughs> said, okay, everybody go home. Oh my God. You each have, you're each responsible so much effort for this. five ads. So we all had to write. <laughs> we five- spent time. On this. Yes, everybody went home, and everyone had to come back to work the next day with five ads that they had written. And I didn't and, really. And our goal was my the idea was you're you're watching porn, you're probably jerking off or whatever. How am I going to get you to click on my ad? Yeah. And the only way to get you to click on my ad is to be fucking outrageous and be porn ish, right? Yeah. yeah. So the, the 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 things that we we came up with an ad. I'll give you and I'll give you an idea. And there, by the way. They get worse than this. I'm pretty sure they're terrible. Yeah. But there was a picture of a. It was obviously a porn star, or whatever, bent over, and the and the ad said, "Fill your holes with mind pump." <laughs> Fill your holes <laughs> with mind pump. <laughs> and if you clicked on it, it brought you to our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and Ear so, ejaculation. Yeah, yeah. And there were there were a lot of them like that. Like there yeah. were like. You know, my, there was some that were terrible. I would, I would not repeat them, Doug. I hope you don't find them. No, I hope he does. They're I so want, bad. Adam. I want to, yeah, but you, you, might, you, people got to understand what we were trying to do. Yeah, because that is exactly what we're trying to do. You can't, you couldn't advertise a podcast traditionally on a porn website. Like, oh not, no, damn it! You, oh, you found, oh found them. You oh found them. Ear, eargasm. Blow your, blow your load, then blow your mind. <laughs> 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 blow your load. <laughs> 
<laughs> so your mind was mind oh, pump. I can't. Uh, Viagra uh, for the brain. Oh, oh, here's a good one. This one was mine. It was to be a picture of a big ass cock. And then yeah. it would say average mind pump listener. <laughs> so it just like <laughs> makes you want to click. Right. Oh, uh, my own. Oh, and so then have a, enlarge your penis and, ads. And then we would have a picture of a micro penis, which is a unfortunate situation. Sorry right. if I'm offending you. Right. And it would say, this person doesn't listen to mind pump. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't listened uh, to mind pump. Oh, here's another one. Mind pump feels good on your cock. That was going to be a good one. Yes. Uh, MILFs love mind pump. Right. <laughs> no, I can't read half of these. <laughs> oh, no, no. I can't. I can't. I can't read. Ga- Try yeah. pumping oh, your mind after your cock. Yeah. Oh, my Ga- God. Guys who listen to Mind Pump get 60% more pussy. <laughs> <laughs> who put that that's, one on there? Dude? That's definitely me, that's bro. That's got to be mine. No yeah, way. I'm the numbers guy. Anything oh, that yeah. I'm numbers oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure yeah, will yeah, be mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. no, Throw it, be- throwing uh, random percentages yeah. out. Listen to Mind Pump and Come oh, Buckets. Oh. Mind Pump is better what? than a, Mind Pump is better than a gangbang. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it though? Is it though? I don't know. Were we being honest? I don't know. Yeah, that's that might be misleading. Ass to mouth, ear to show. <laughs> that's a pretty good. Duh. Damn. Well, dude, the, here's the other thing. Okay, so Doug was only on board if we like funneled this specific traffic to their own landing page, right? So all these dirty, you know, creepy, you know. There's certain ones that I can off. read and I know which ones are which. Yeah. Like who? Like I know Justin's mind and I know for sure listen to Mind Pump and Come Buckets is definitely. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's mine. That's definitely. Oh, uh, this one's great. Gross. This, this is a good one. And. I think I probably came. I think I came up with this one because it sounds logical. Like this is the time. This is what the ad says. Yeah. After you're done jerking off, listen to my pup. Like, hey, <laughs> hey, after you're done, just hey, click on over. I know what you're Come doing. Come check right us now. out. Yeah, well, anyway. I, I got information yeah. for you. Into huge cocks. Us too. What the fuck? Why would we put that? What? I don't get that. We're, That's what it said. <laughs> it actually said that. Why? Oh man. We're, yeah. We're playing. Look at this. Going on. Oh, Doug no. has all kinds of notes too. Oh, well. the gay side. Oh no! Or... Scroll up. Scroll up, Doug. That's a terrible one. I have to read that one. It said, it says, <laughs> I have to read that one. You it's, have to read no. that one. Anal lesbian fisting. Just kidding. Listen to my pump. <laughs> Why? Why? Just kidding. <laughs> Bait and switch. You know, the real the real thing that's hilarious about all this is that we did actually spend time on this. Like, this yeah. actually took oh, at least well, a no. couple days that's of so embarrassing. Hold on. We took more time than that. We actually sent Doug off <laughs> to find photos oh, and to right. create the ads yes and so doug doug where did you go Doug had to do research in the dark how webs did you, how did you do it what, what, how did you get this research where did you find these pictures <laughs> research. Were they, are, it's are, called google <laughs> oh really that's, that's all you did yeah yeah. Oh. yeah i thought maybe there was one of those sites where you know you can pay for the picture oh no yeah there's stock photo sites for porno pictures oh there is yeah oh that is uh-huh. it damn what do you know so, so on doug's computer <laughs> it yeah. says he's Forever. searching for big cocks. Yeah, or, I had to yeah. burn that computer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unbelievable. Do you think that was our worst idea? What do you think was our yeah, worst that idea? Was, that was a bad oh, one. God, that's, and I'll take full responsibility for that. That's got to be one of the best ideas we came up with. We've yeah. come up with a few where we didn't, you know, we didn't, you know, ideas where we think they sound great. And then the next day we're like, what? Yeah. That's not going to work, but this is the best one by far. What do you think were some like l- major game changer decisions that we made along the way that made a big difference in either the podcast or the bu- business in I general? Think, uh, I think our decision with our logo was, and that wasn't even something we all thought about really. It was really us kind of like, well, well we got to put a logo up. And I, you know, it, it was brilliant because you when you're the on- mad, The Mad Mike? Uh, yeah, well, no. Or you just, mean the mind pump, the original? Yeah, the the, the podcast Sad stood oh. out. In, oh, the yellow and the black. Yeah, and the mind because pump truth. Here's look. If you're listening to start a remember podcast, we, we all. I remember when Doug brought, Doug was the one that brought it to us. Yep. And I remember we were all kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. No one was excited nobody about cared. it. Yeah. Nobody really cared, and it was like it works. You know what I'm saying? But we all said, well, we'll you know, we'll make a cooler one later. That's or it. Like that. Mm-hmm. But when you look at it, when you sc- when you're scrolling for podcasts, that's just it. If you're about to start a podcast or you have a podcast, when you look at the icons for apps on on your phone they're small so if you have like a detailed picture with lots of writing and it looks real cool it's not going to show well no because it's not a big it's not a big icon but if it's a small icon with like big letters like ours is like mind pump it's very clear so and now now that's kind of the standard now that's what people are starting to understand so i think that was a big one i think the other thing that was big was when we stopped starting the show with starting the show because early on when we started mind pump the episodes would start by 
All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for coming to on. Mind Pump. Yeah. I'm your host, oh, that's Stafford. right. I forgot yeah, I about that. Like intro. It like Do that. you remember what made us go to start and just cut into the conversation? Did we have that? A, was one of the best mm, decisions we could ever yeah, when make. Was that? Uh, I remember Doug. I rem- I do remember Doug saying something like. I like when you guys when we just come into a conversation. I think he just started editing it that way. Is that it? it was either that or mm. I don't remember. We might have had a conversation, but whatever happened, that switch was a huge, uh, it was a game changer for us. It how, really changed the conversation. How about when yeah. you stopped uh, asking Doug for time? That was early on. Yeah, that was early. On. Remember when <laughs> yeah, we were always like, we got left. "Well, yeah. you remember when we first started? The strategy was to land between twenty and thirty minutes because the average commute. So the most people listen to podcasts while they're driving from yeah. to and from work. The average commute was twenty two minutes. So we thought it was a smart strategy to kind of fall around that. And everything else was really long form, right. you know, at the time. And so we thought that would help to kind of differentiate us from it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yep. And, and so, so it was, it was logical. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I'd ask Doug what time it was because, yeah. And the other thing, too, is <clears throat> we would have conversations. The things that are funny about that, though, is that when you're doing that, why no one's really thinking about it like it's, it's such a bad idea. It wasn't until like later do you kind of like, Start to go like, why are we saying that? Yeah, that's right. why, why are we yeah, doing that's that? annoying. Yeah. Why are we cutting it right here? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I think uh, our out the gates. I, you know, <clears throat> we're just going to say what's on our mind. I think that was such a great because we could have totally started the podcast much more formulaic and much more like okay, produced. Yeah, and and in the fact that we decided not to, I think was uh, was just great. And and part of that might have been just like. We would want to listen to it. You know what I mean? Like we wouldn't want to. Well, listen I think to it. I think mm-hmm. you know I think it's more common now. But when we first started, it, it wasn't that common. We were, as far as I knew, we were one of the only shows that I knew that wasn't that produced up. Even shows that people think aren't that produced are produced up. Mm-hmm. You know, there's mm-hmm. there. It's rare that I meet a, another podcaster who has any sort that has the same formula as we do, where you just get on the mics and then you go. Like almost yeah. everybody has notes. Everybody cuts out the bad questions, the dead air, speeds up their mm-hmm. speeds it up so they sound like they're talking faster. Like there's a lot of tricks that people do to make even make something that is real and authentic still sound mm-hmm. better. Yeah. And we were just pure raw. I think a lot of the decisions that we made weren't we raw caught, dogged weren't caught, Yeah. Except, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Back, you're still back on those I, ads. I'm trying. I'm, trying. <laughs> I'm reminiscing. Still. Throwback. <laughs> Throwback. Mind pump. Mind you, pump. <laughs> it will kick you in the cunt. No, <laughs> that, was, that was another one. By the way, that's a real. that was a real one we came up it's with. It's a kick It's a kick in the cunt. I have no idea. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, know what that means. Uh, but a lot of the decisions that we made along the way weren't, this is what I find fascinating. It wasn't us sitting around saying, this is what we're going to do. It just turned into that. For example, the, fo- the format of our show our quas are our most common episodes, right? The Q and A's. Those are also the most popular episodes, and we started doing those very early on because it gave us great content. We want to connect with our audience, but it very naturally took on this: we bullshit in the beginning or do whatever conversation we want, and then it transitioned into all right, let's answer the questions, and it very naturally. Now we hear this qua intro, this eagle, and all. But it was like, we just kind of morphed into that. That's the way we do the show. Well, you know, it was different too. Like you had mentioned people having to cut out time. Like the, the, having three people to fill spaces and gaps is like, it, keep, it kept it going so we don't have to edit like that. Because yeah, that, otherwise you kind of do a lot of times. You do. and that, But that flow is really interesting, right? Yeah. It just kind of naturally happened. And then the other thing too is other, I, I don't know how other podcasts end their podcast, but but they tend to declare that they're going to end it. Like, well, I think we're going to, this is the last question or here's how we're going to, and our show was always just ended when we all felt like it should end, which yeah. is always kind of weird. You ever notice yeah. that? Well, yeah. no, for the longest we're time. In group flow. It used to trip us out when we first yeah. started. We don't even comment on it anymore, but I remember we'd hang up and we'd all each other like, I was done. I was done yeah, too. I was oh, yeah. ready. I was Everyone ready was already. It was just like we just stopped. Everyone stopped yeah. talking. No one had anything else to to put in. You know. Yeah. So I feel like that's kind of thing. I mean, the intros. Your idea, Adam, to do the intros was was mm-hmm. great. Uh, Especially yeah. with our interviews. Yeah, interviews and sponsors. Wow. Yeah. Having an intro really allows us to time. to do sponsorships. Oh, yeah, and, and it makes it feel more authentic too to me. I feel like it doesn't force. That's what I mean. Yeah. We don't feel like we're forced to. Yeah, it's like, hey, we mentioned this 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 you know sponsor or whatever like that during the show. If you want more information on it. This is what we have on it. Mm-hmm. It's just so much better. I think that it, there's a lot of things I see now too. With uh, I was just talking to a kid um, yesterday about you know he's got a podcast and he's like on his twentieth episode or whatever, and he was just asking for some advice. And uh, they have three guys, <clears throat> and I said, you know, I've seen uh, quite a few people now try and run with three 
uh, since we started, you know, and I didn't really see that a lot. It's very rare. It's you, you normally see one or two, two at, max, two max. Yeah. And you know, we're one of the one of the few. And there's more now, but there wasn't a lot when we first started. I don't know very. I didn't know very many three man. No, three there's show. not. There's not a lot. And then some of them have like there'll be like one or two main hosts, and then there's like the like Doug the producer. Like he, yeah, he comes yeah, on yeah. as much as Doug comes yeah, on the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there, it's hard to have. I mean, it takes really three unique personalities i think to mesh with three on a show it's too much otherwise it's too much it's it's not i don't know i could see how it would be well i remember when i first heard episodes where there would be multiple people and what i didn't like was it was sometimes really hard to tell who was who which i mean i know that Mm -hmm. some people still had that problem a little bit with us even though i think we sound all three of us sound way different yeah that was interesting i know everybody (laughs) thought i was sal everybody thought you were they would get sal and i mixed up a lot like people a lot of times people get you and i mixed up which i think is funny too because i don't think we just on pictures yeah they thought i was you i was like what no way (laughs) they got a lot more to offer yeah (laughs) he does and, and then yeah. the, I, I also remember early on the decision. It wasn't really a decision, but it was including Doug in the conversation on a semi regular basis. You remember that? Like we would do that, and uh, I and the the reason why we did that as I think we were inspired. I know I was definitely inspired by Howard Stern. Yeah, and how Howard Stern would always include. We all had a love for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so I'm like, no, no, no. Doug needs to be. Like as a part of the show, I need to be able to talk to him, ask him questions, and have him comment mm-hmm. because I think it's it's valuable to have that you know that piece. Rogan does it too, and you can see a lot of the real the, the real popular shows tend to do that. Um, Johnny Carson did it right. He started it with uh, Ed McMahon. Yeah, now, all, now there's always that all single thing. guys though. You know, it's rare to see two or three and then it, and it work out because it's even ourselves. If you remember at the beginning, part of what I think is is has got better over over time is you know we we have gotten even better at pausing and not talking over each other in certain topics. So I think that that is something that has evolved and I don't think it could have evolved with a different three with, for me at least, like I just Mm -hmm. think that the, what each person contributes to what types of topics, like I think, and everybody has like this thing where, you know, if there's a guy talking about something and I know this is like maybe Justin, something that Justin does like to talk about more. Like I actively don't say much, Mm -hmm. even though I could say much, but I know it's something that I know that he would. So I I just, I automatically throttle back because I know that sometimes I have the ability to dominate the conversation much like Sal can do on sometimes. Yeah, And Mm -hmm. and the thing is too, is a lot of it's based on feel. So you can, like any conversation, you can feel, you know, if you're in tune with the other person, when you should talk more, talk less, and it's there's a flow that that kind of happens. We we had that really well uh, early on. I, I call it chemistry, right, where we kind of feel that kind of flow, and that's good advice for someone looking to start a podcast with co-hosts. Because mm. here's the deal: at the end of the day, you know, look, if you're just an infor- informational podcast where I'm just going to inform you and read off of things, and that doesn't matter. But if you have want to have a more conversational podcast, which in my opinion, and I think I'm right, it's has a far more standard. Yeah, and it has far more potential for well, think for, about it, for it's, all that stuff. It's taking over radio, and talk radio has been around forever and been extremely. And that's popular. the well, It's way more yeah. relatable. It's funny because I was actually having a pretty in depth conversation about this with my barber yesterday. I was getting my hair cut. And uh, it looks good, by the way. Yeah, thanks, man. You know, it's it's no super cuts, but it's it's. Uh, <laughs> I try, um, but yeah, you know, we were we were just talking about like his favorite show is the Dan Dan Lebitar show. So this is an ESPN um, podcast that he also has his show on ESPN. But he is, I guess, just exploding. The show is just going crazy, and their format is really unique. But it's super conversational based. Rarely do they tu- they touch like specifics in sports. Um, they interact like on another level with their audience. So like real time, they'll re- they'll read like tweets and and stuff that 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 the audience is kind of providing. They have that sort of in the know feel, right? So if they cover a topic or whatever, it's like and they've done it in the past. They're not going to re- like catch people up to speed. Like you have to like have listened to the show. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's this cult kind of thing behind it and. And we're, we kept talking about it. It's like, you know, it's the, this old formula of like, I'm presenting you this information and now to you, Susie, you yeah. know, and it's like that whole formula people are seeing right through that because that's not how you talk no, and to you me wanna, in person. You like, it's not relatable. And you want to sit in on a conversation. And so my, my, my point with this is if you're going to start a podcast 
with another co-host and you're going to sit down and have conversation, you got to pick a fucking partner that you, if you didn't have a podcast, you'd like to sit down <laughs> and have a conversation and have a conversation with. And here's the deal. This is the funny thing. And, and uh, you know, my girlfriend's already commented on this uh, t- uh, several times. When we all get to, which is not common, and I wish we would do it more often, but we, we don't. But when we all get everybody together, like, you know, wives, girlfriends, families, she'll, my girlfriend always comments, wow, I feel like I'm, in, I'm, I'm watching Mind Pump because me, you know, me, Adam, Justin, the, the three of us with Doug, will go right into yeah. deep fucking, you know, long conversation just like this. Yeah. And so you have to, if you find that, that may be the person you'd want to partner well, with. That's if you don't why, find that it's hard. This is part of the magic hard. behind Fighter and the Kid. Fighter yes. and the Kid, they're both really friends. They yep. hang out. They go, and they, you can hear it. Yeah, you, you, tell, you yeah. can hear it. And they're the way they can talk to each other and pick on each other and do things like that. Like there's not, that's not going to like make him all insecure or piss him off. Like I remember when we first had Craig, like I remember thinking like we don't have that relationship. Yeah, sure. yeah. Like we're cool. We're buddies, you know, and we, we communicate on a regular basis, but we didn't have the same bond. You still have to tightrope a bit. All yeah. Stuff. Like, it's, ser- it's serendipitous. Yeah. Like too. I feel like I could literally say the meanest shit to Justin or you. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, but it's fine. You know what I mean? It's hey, like, what did I say? I've bar- said the meanest shit. To hey, what did I say? Sound, you? you said I said something mean. Did you listen to that oh, yeah, episode? No, what did he oh, say? What did I say? I talk shit. Yeah, it wasn't even like I was. I say I was just I was laughing because I my assumption was when you guys get on a podcast without me, like you know you're gonna throw some jabs in there. I was like expecting it, you know. And I haven't I haven't done it in a while because it's like I listen to you guys all the time. You know, I'm not gonna listen to you on some some other asshole asking you questions. Yeah, you don't have to be be yeah, you're not supportive. It's okay. I'm not. not. (laughs) I know you guys don't listen to me on podcasts either. It's fine, but like I just was like, no, I'm listening to this. I want to see how this went. Like I want to (laughs) see what they talked about, topics they covered, this and that. And right out of the gates, uh, I, I think you guys you were you were in the gym setting so obviously like uh, I mean you, you could hear like barbells and shit like clanging on the ground and uh, uh, I forget you guys are introducing yourselves and then I think it was I'm pretty sure it was Adam was like kind of describing he's like oh yeah like I'm the handsome one and you know he's the <laughs> smart one and we got the other guys you know the ugly funny one <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ugly, funny one. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you, Adam. Did you really say that? It wasn't, it wasn't like that specific words, but it was like, you know, that it might same be. context. It might be. It, I, even if it was, well, I, I mean, was dying. I, I probably I was called you the other guy because ever since somebody said that, yeah, right? So right. Ever, yeah. so that's like me repeating well, I, something. I that, called myself that. Yeah, right. It's all right. It's, it's, it's fucking, I love no, it. How about, the, how about the text? No, literally, it was something about me, me being the one that, you know why? Because you guys were on video. That's what brought it up, right? Because it was like it was like on YouTube, or I was going to live on YouTube. And so you made some joke that, you know, thank God we got the handsome ones here. Yeah. Uh, the other guy, That's he's funny. funny, but we can't put him on film. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, oh, Adam, no, you son of a bitch. Oh, so yeah. Justin called last night on the on the thread. Justin calls me out for that. I haven't even heard it oh, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Sal comes back. What did you say? You came back. And I don't you, remember. You said to uh, you said to Justin. You said, Justin, I've been meaning to tell you, Adam's really mean when you're not when. You're you're not around. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I said back, I said, what the fuck are you talking about? I mean, all, consistently, <laughs> yeah, all the time. Consistently mean. Yeah. And then I said, like, my, oh, yeah, he was just like, being Adam. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, what about, so this, <laughs> I got to say it, I don't care. The, you know, we obviously have our, our facilities next to a gym, a CrossFit gym. Oh, you're going to share And we share, a, we share a bathroom with them, which, by the way, I hope they fix the bathroom soon. It's <laughs> fucking ridiculous. But anyway, yeah. our back doors open sometimes, and there's a dude that works out in there that uh, he knows Adam. So they're kind of like, not really buddies or whatever, oh but they God. know each other. And he always just barges in. <laughs> right? He won't listen to this. Don't he worry. always barges in and he says, you know, hey, what's and he talks shit and whatever. And he's a cool guy. Yeah, he's nothing cool wrong guy. with that. Yeah, so he walks in and I got to preface this by saying he's probably five, five, maybe, yeah. right? If that. Maybe five. five four, I think he's five, five, three, actually. Okay, five, three. So he walks in and we're, I don't remember what we were doing. We were meeting. Adam was... Probably angry. I think you were angry. Because <laughs> I was angry. I think you were angry because of the pollen or something. And so you're yeah, sitting, yeah. He was a little bit agitated. A little bit. You, a little bit. You could smell it on him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, sometimes that happens. So yeah. he's sitting there. We're sitting on the couch. The guy walks in. He makes some like comment, like dudes do, like "What's up, you fuckers? You guys yeah, working? Yeah, yeah, What's yeah. the matter?" Yeah. And Adam, Adam, just fucking real loud. He's like, "Hey, man, did you get taller or something? What's going yeah, on? Yeah. You, you like, wearing you wearing heels? No. Oh, Hit him, on, man. You look a lot taller. Hit him in the worst insecurity <laughs> that dude's been dealing with for this entire <laughs> life. Right in the nuts. Just pow, 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 pow. I couldn't believe there was separate. reason behind uh, that because he is a loud he is a loud guy and he's a he's a fireball and I got nothing but love for him. He's a good dude. 
Uh, yeah. Smart guy, has a very successful business. That's how we got connected. Uh, love what he's doing and stuff like that. And he's he, he he's a has a big t shirt line that he provides for like the CrossFit community and does really well. And he's fucking a cool dude. And we talk a lot, but he's definitely a loud guy and just like, he'll just come in. You know what I'm saying? Like he walks, because he knows <laughs> yeah, me, yeah. he just sh- walks in our studio whenever he wants. We'll be in a meeting with somebody or yeah. what like that and the guy will just kind of come in and we, because we leave our back door open so we can go to to and from the bathroom, We it, but nobody does that. Nobody really just comes into our studio. Yeah. Maybe people peek in, let's see what's going on, but yeah. it doesn't look welcoming, like, come on in. You know what I'm saying? No. But he barges <laughs> in. not welcoming. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm in the building. Right. And, and he just, just blazes he loves, right through us. He loves to talk shit. Yeah. He's a big talker. Yeah. Adam's like, hey, shorty. <laughs> <laughs> Old school, yeah. like old school, like uh, you know when you talk you're shit. Really when you're tall, kid. yeah. You look yeah. real tall today. Hey, what's up, fatty? Yeah, we, oh, you, work, you working on your posture, dude? I'm, I want to do. Doing? I want to do that one of these days. Like you know when you yell at someone that cuts you off, and you say something like "fuck you, asshole." What I'm going to do, and I want to test this out. Fire insecurity. I want to actually hit him with your some, mom hates you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but something real. Like if you look at them and they're like overweight, you're like yeah, yeah, yeah. well, you're a fat mother. You know, just make them like, oh. No, you got to pick things yeah. that are like like real a nose or their eye. Yeah. Like you pick those things. It's like the mean. That's what kids are mean like that, bro. Oh, that's yeah. why. That's why bullying is so mm. bad. Is because because it's real. Well, it is. That's why. You're like, but it's true. It yeah. is because it's the kids. It they don't know. They up. they just they see what they see. They see that so you have something that's not like everybody else, right? It's yeah. like the fucking Sesame Street episode, yeah. right? You fucking can't. You one of these things doesn't belong together. You know what I'm saying? You have a bigger nose than you everybody have else, a mole. right? Or yeah, something like, different. Like started fucking with it, and I'm, kids I'm, oh. are. But now here's the argument that I have with that too. Part of that, like it is. Real, you do have a mole there, or your nose is bigger than average. Right. At one point, you're gonna have to face this. <laughs> yeah. At one point, you're gonna have to accept who you are it's and like love who you are. Real feedback. Regard, it is. It's yeah. quick. Fe- it's, it's real. Feedback. It's real fucking feedback yeah. early on in life. Yeah. And instead yeah. of us coddling the kids over being bullying, like maybe let's fucking talk yeah. to them about it. Yeah. Like but they said, what? I have a big nose. Well, honey, okay. First off, let's be clear. You do have a big nose. Right. Yeah. However, yeah. it's not a bad thing. Yes. Yeah. Have that conversation. What you want? Yeah. You want to know the truth about yourself? Hang out with a bunch of like eight year olds. Yeah. You know what I mean? And oh, just yeah. wait and see the comments did you guys have like a, a trigger like word or something that someone would say to you when you were little that was like that hurts me mama's boy no, oh no wow way. that was quick bro yes that was oh, quick. i that remember was- that like vividly growing up dude because like that was like no 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 <laughs> you know now nobody why, calls me that now why was it because when you were young you were a mama's boy were you attached to your mom i think Is that yeah why? i think i i yeah i was definitely like uh, I think what it was for me was I wasn't allowed to do a lot of stuff. And so then they associated that with being like, well, you know, if you do what mommy tells you to do. Oh, no. oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? And so I was like, no, I do what I want. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm and it became tattoo. this thing that, yeah, it was like, which is I, why he gets frazzled when we when we play with him back and oh, forth. Oh, I know. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. You're always gonna do what Adam says. <laughs> yes, yes, right. <laughs> yeah, like on some level, I joke with it, but yeah, you on some level, you I'm shouldn't sure have gave it that to me. me. You shouldn't have gave <laughs> that. Ah, son of a bitch. I got something real powerful. I'm saving yeah. for, for what yeah. I, I'm gonna use it. <laughs> how, how dare <laughs> you? So Sal. good. It's fine. I'll get you back. Uh, well, for me, it was uh, skinny. Skinny. Me too. Me too. Yeah. The word. That's the only one that the only one that comes to mind. That ever like, because everything else I felt like I overcame. So I felt like if kids that made fun of me for being poor, like, yeah, no shit, I am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what, whatever. Like, if I had crooked teeth, yeah, no shit, I got them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the things that I got teased for then that bothered me, but the skinny thing hit me different. Weird. Like, huh? the skinny thing hit me, which is what led me and motivated me to eventually lift weights was, and it, I think that it never hit me to the point where I was like depressed or mad, but inside it was like I wanted to solve that. Mm-hmm. Like inside, it, it causes like I, I you know. I what, think it's a combination of for me. I'm the, I'm the same. Actually, we're all like this, but this is a specific thing, right? It's like you take a person who has the kind of mentality where if they don't like something, they're gonna pull up their sleeves and they're gonna change it. So I've had that attitude since I was a young child. I think you have as well. So people say you're skinny, you feel insecure about it. I'm gonna do something about it. Mm-hmm. And the cool thing is. With exercise, you actually see the effects of that, and it only strengthens this belief that I can change things. Mm -hmm. So I'm so happy... Like I'm very appreciative that it was skinny. For so me. so am I because it drove it drove me to seek for that, and I probably wouldn't have I probably would have gave up if it wasn't such a deep rooted insecurity. Right, right. Because it was so deep, you know, I didn't have I wasn't like somebody who touched weights and blew up right away at all. I worked at it and did a lot of things the wrong way for a really long time because I was driven by that insecurity. Mm-hmm. So you use that, and that's why the I think that it's, sometimes it's tough to like 
beat yourself up over certain things like that because a lot of times when you see these people that are great at something, a lot of times it's driven through this insecurity that's oh, been course. rooted for a very long time yeah. and it's what's made them so special on the other end of it well, because they've worked so hard. Let's be to honest, if you're going to be if you're going to be at uh, you know the top, you know, 5% of something, then there's probably dysfunction. There's probably some dysfunction there. What I mean by that is like if you're going to be one of the top 5 wealthiest people in the world, uh, you know, starting and building your own from scratch, you're going to be you're probably going to be obsessive. You're probably going to be dysfunctional. You're probably not going to have good relationships with friends and family. You're probably going to be unbalanced and that kind of stuff. Same thing with the search for knowledge, the search for, you know, building your body or whatever. If it they're typically driven by something that's so deep seated that it pushes you to to do things, you know, to, to not to, to lose that kind of balance. Did you see that post that Logan did? Um, the one who interviewed all of us, he did a post about famous people that you've met. No, I didn't no. see it. So I, I wrote I wrote a line. I, was, I happened to be high that night, and I wrote <laughs> I wrote this, which is probably why I didn't think it through. Like I probably should have said this differently because somebody received it the wrong way and like talked shit to me, called me a douchebag over it. And he was he was asking his audience or his his followers, you know, hey, have you guys met any famous people, and who have you met? And you know, like, and you could tell that he was like really jazzed to hear like you know who's the most famous people yeah. and who's met all these people, and he was listing off people who he's met. And, you know, I started listing off all these stories of like famous people that I've been around and professional athletes. And <clears throat> I said, you know, to be honest, like I'm really not impressed and I, I'm not impressed that um, they don't do something very impressive. I think that's in, in what their, their skill that they do, whether it be a sport um, just brilliant, and so they're these authors, or they, they've done, done, or they're actors or actresses. Mm -hmm. They have a talent that they are incredible. At. But the more of them that I, I was around, the more I realized that they were out of balance in other parts of their life, and that's part of what drove them to be so successful in these other avenues. So it was actually very rare that I would meet somebody super famous who was super talented in something and that's why they were super famous mm -hmm. and they were good communicators with people and they were friendly or they were really intelligent somewhere else like they just it's true think about it this way i bet you have a bunch of musicians you know right now maybe some are listening that would say if i could only have the creative power that Jimi hendrix had they want that like and i'm just using Jimi hendrix as an example but what they don't realize is what what part of what may may have created that or what comes with that right. is the internal Struggle. turmoil yes, and yeah. torment that drove that type of creation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and it's like, you know, it's funny. It reminds me of this uh, cartoon I'm watching with my son, which I definitely should not be watching with my son. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Way more. A little bit inappropriate. Yeah. Have you guys ever watched Afro Samurai? Has ever watched that? No, you know, I've seen uh, clips of it, but I've never actually watched it. Fucking one. badass, dude. Yeah. It's fucking badass. It's, so it's like this, it's this, this, anime of like this cartoon network this, sa this samurai who watches his dad get killed and so then his, he goes on this mission to to find <coughs> the man who kills him he who wears afro he has a big afro and his dad did too so there's these, these black dudes but it's hilarious samuel l jackson is one of the voices fucking hilarious and he's searching for the number one headband and the number one headband when you when you have that you have all these godly powers you become like unstoppable and it's funny because he searches for this and when you get it when you get it you you live a life of turmoil because people are constantly challenging you, and it reminds me of this in the sense that you want these incredible achievements. I want to be like Elon Musk, or I want to be whatever. But do you really? Do you really yeah. want all those things? Do you and, want the judgment the, uh, at that level, or and the, and the, and just the internal drive that causes you to maybe have terrible relationships, maybe causes you to be yeah. There's an Afro summer, and that's that's episode. what I meant yeah. by the post that I was doing is I just started yeah. listing off, and they're they're cool stories. Like don't get me wrong, like you know, sitting around a campfire, smoking some weed, asked me about some cool experiences that I've had with with famous people, and you know, there's some cool stories to tell for campfires. But how many of those people do I, would I really care to be friends with? Yeah. To be honest with you, not very many of yeah. them. Yeah. You tough. know, it's just and and, and some of the ones that they're are not balanced, they're not. You know, and that's okay though. Like, yeah. but I can totally respect and admire their gift and their talent. But I think it's crazy when we we hold some of these people up at in this like limelight. Yeah. Oh my God, they're yeah. so yeah, try to get you know uh, try to get some like athletes like Michael Jordan to not talk about basketball when yeah, you're hanging out. Yeah, with yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? No, we we, we tend to um, w what happens is we take we see people who have these gifts. over glamorize it. Well, what we do is we make them gods. Yeah, we start to worship them and like they are infallible or they're 
perfect or they're great people. Like, how many people do you know if they were talking about the favorite celebrity whom they've never met and don't know at all? All of them be like, man, I fucking love that guy. He's such a good guy. You could tell he's a good guy. Oh, she's so funny. She's <laughs> right, so right. down to earth. You don't fucking know them. Right. You assume that because you admire their gift so much that our what happens as humans is when we admire some someone for a gift, we tend to cre- turn them into, put them on a pedestal and turn them into this amazing person because how could we possibly admire someone so much if they're not this perfect God. You see what I'm saying? Right. And we do that and it's such a bad thing that we do. Because mm-hmm. then you have idiot celebrities preaching about what you should vote on or what should happen. They don't know anything at all about anything yeah. and they give terrible advice. It's like, why? look at you're a great actor. I love watching you right. act. Stick with acting. But you're, 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 I don't know you. I don't trust well, you. Well, it's the same thing we see with hot chicks on Instagram that all of a sudden now are you know, answering fitness advice. Yeah, <laughs> it's the same fucking thing. It's like yeah. you don't know anything about this. Well, at least they show something though. You know what I mean? Like, oh, well, you're fit. Maybe you know a little bit about fitness. <sighs> well, I guess. Anyway, anyway, always good times with you guys. Yeah, man. no. I, these, you know, these, uh, this 420 episode is a good one. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. We haven't had an episode where we really talked about. We've like, stretched our legs in a while. We've done. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we've been. I, yeah, I noticed that when we first started talking. I'm like, you know what's crazy is we've been doing so many interviews and quas that we just remember when we first started we'd have like you know we were just we had a ton of content information but there got to be a point where we'd sit there and be like well what should we talk about what should be the the topic today like or what should we address today and we'd have to come up with these ideas because we didn't have interviews lined up we didn't we were only doing i think one qua back then and we didn't even have a lot of people that were engaging at that time so we're just constantly coming up with topic ideas where it's like we haven't even had to do that in so long that I forget that it's sometimes it's nice just to get on here and not have any direction or anything that we have to cover or any sponsorships that we have to talk about or any. any well, and back then we used to part ways, you know. Right. We, we used to go do our other, you know, side jobs at mm-hmm. the time, mm-hmm. and then or you know just reconvene once twice a week, and you, you got all this new stuff to like catch up on. Are you guys? We see, don't have that anymore. There wasn't a single moment since starting this that I even had the slightest doubt that this would be something that we would be doing for a long time. How weird is that from that day one? Yeah. From day one, I didn't think to myself like, well, I right away. Well, I, like, I remember Katrina and I had this conversation. I uh, remember her asking me like, because she's been with me seven years and in seven years, she's watched one, two, three, four, me build four businesses in that time. So she's So her question to me was like, you know, is this going to be something that you build up, you do, and then you move on to something else? Like, you, you, do you find yourself doing mind pump, you know, for a long time? And I said, you know, what's crazy is I do. I really do. And the reason why I do is because it's the first thing ever that I've been a part of building that it fulfills so many of my needs and things that are important to me. Isn't that crazy? And, and some of those are crazy ones. Like, bro, I have to be stimulated with new challenges and new ideas and, and new new ways to make money. Yep. Like, yeah. I, that, that's important. Like, I like to be challenged by well, that's why you'd build them up and then you know sell them off or like make them profitable and then move on to something else well that's what's cool about this one is that there it's it's turned into something that there's so many yeah like sub so businesses and pillars within within the business that it feeds that side of me that's important then it has another side to me that's really important that's why i fell in love with fitness and health is it it has this accountability piece for me is that if I'm going to talk to people and teach people about health and wellness, it requires me to continue to improve upon myself. So it provides me this opportunity for growth in the space that I already know that I love to do. And then you add in the fact that I have to put all of this out on air where people are going to listen to me and critique and hang on every fucking word that I'm saying, which has now also challenged me to grow mentally and also to work on the way I articulate my thoughts which is uh, it provides this other area for me to grow. It, it's it turbo, feeds turbo so growth. much. It's turbo it growth. This is the incubator of growth. You know, like it's been this crazy accelerated path that even just for me and my communication skills and like what you know, I, I sit around and talk about my wife now. It kind of trips me out. Yeah. It's like you know, like wow. I you know, it, it it's really stimulating and it's it's definitely like either you're in or, you know, you're going to get crushed. And so it's like every day you just want to like come in guns blazing and conquer something. Well, you know, what's cool too, is that we're, we all are leaders. And right now, a lot of what we've done to build to where we're at has been about ourselves or been about the business, the single thing. And now that it's getting to this point, what I'm really excited about is when we really get to 
follow another passion of mine, which is developing other, other people. Other people. Oh, I and, can't wait. And building yeah. others up and helping wait. others be successful because I enjoy doing that probably more. Than I do too. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that to me has always been my favorite. What kept me at 24 for as long as I did was my people. Mm-hmm. I love to build a team, man. I love to find young, hungry minds that wanted to learn, that wanted to be better, that wanted to help others. And I wanted to help teach them how to do that while making money and having a, a livelihood. I just totally got off on that. So we're not we're just now starting to kind of touch that in this business and I think that is going to be that's going to fulfill a side of me that I love doing for years. I've, I've never worked th- for 3 years and it feel like the fastest period of time ever. Yeah. It and a lot has happened in that 3 years but it, I've never I mean th- 3 years working in a gym feels like an eternity. Yeah. It it feels like a fucking eternity and I love the gym. It's like I don't like it. I love it. Three years with Mind Pump yeah. feels like, I mean, if I think about it, I can see like, whoa, shit, that was three years ago. And if I think about how different we were even three years ago and how much we've grown and all that stuff, yeah. But when I just, otherwise it's like, God, it's weird. No. It feels like- no, I used to count the days. I don't even know like what day it is today. <laughs> yeah. It's Friday. That's because you, you had a, you had a <laughs> I don't know because of what happened earlier. What do you think of, uh, I'm really interested to see, so, you know, Taylor's kind of finding his groove in the stuff that he's doing within the within the business, and you know he's starting to get into a lot of the partnership networking for us and handling that side of the business, which I love because it's a side of the business that I enjoy, and seeing him be able to be kind of an extension of of what I like to do, and now start to align us with some really cool companies and do some really in person live mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. I think it's going to be fun. Like I think now is the time we have enough people, especially on the West Coast. That we can tour the West Coast and come up and fill. It'll these- be a new. This will be a new growth period for us because mm-hmm. we're we're proficient at uh, podcasting. We're getting proficient at video. We're not. We're our skill isn't on video as good as it on on podcast. What I mean by that is our comfort flow, all that stuff. But it's getting there. Yeah. Live is new. So yeah. live, I I feel like however we do in the beginning, we're gonna get so much better. You know, later on, and I'm excited because every time we do something yeah, it's new, it's a new area to grow, yeah, and I yeah. think that that's definitely something that I'm looking forward to. It, and that's the thing about fear and like excitement, and like you know, we talked about this just recently on a podcast, and it's it's at that level now where fear to me feels way more like it's excitement. Yeah, and so that to me, I've I've been like one of the biggest fears, you know, is, is just talking in front of people. And that's already like, Oh shit, that's going to be fun. Exciting. Everything's yeah. going to be. Did I tell, did I tell gross. you guys that, um, well, uh, one of our guys, one of our close buddies, I won't name him cause I know he doesn't want to probably sell out Brett Contreras on this, but he was, <laughs> we'll sell someone else. Out. Yeah. We'll sell Brett out. Whatever. <laughs> that's what Brett gets for not coming up here on the show. Oh, so. hey. <laughs> Sorry, glute master. No, I, I actually, I think we're supposed to meet up with him when we're down, down he's South. A, he's a cool guy. Yeah. No, Brett's yeah. Brett's solid dude. And who I'm talking about actually said nothing but great things about him. So he's fucking full, learned so much full of knowledge. The guy is fucking awesome. But I guess that he's absolutely terrified of like speaking in public like that. Oh, this other, this other person. Yeah. Oh. So in the end he's, I guess, you know, Brett is holding these like, uh, glute camps and like certification, oh, yeah. cor- like he's doing certification courses and everything through his facility. And I can't remember. He told me there's like 50 to 70 people in there or 30 to 50. I can't remember exactly how many, but somewhere in that range. And, uh, he was all like suited and tied up. And he said he was like, he literally was just drenched in sweat, sweating. And he had to like stop mid, mid sentence. And so I had to go, I got to take a breath. You guys, I don't like talking to him. And he had to go sit down like over in the corner all by himself, like pause the fucking wow. middle of the talk and like had to like walk away. No shit. Like, oh dude, that's crazy. But you, people don't know that. Dude, you know? I'll tell you, let me- some of the guys that are, and that's what, this is what's wrong with our industry is Guys like him that do have incredible information are intelligent. Are are can't bre- communicate. Are, are are yes. Are breaking through on some great. I mean, if it wasn't for, I, I mean, we all see the hip thrust now exploding because of him, right? It, it's just yeah. that is Brett Contreras, hundred percent. Yeah. Before that, nobody was doing these, and he did all the he did all the research, all the studies to prove how beneficial they are. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you wouldn't see dudes doing it now. You know, sure. you see bodybuilder right. guys, you see powerlifter guys. Oh my god! Of, Ten years ago, if a guy was doing that, he would got laughed at. Yeah, totally. And and so he's completely changed the game. So, but not a lot of people know who he is and not a lot of people are following or paying attention because, you know, they're not the best at marketing and selling and being and being that voice out there. So that's I tell you what, if if you want to have a superpower, a real superpower, just learn how to do something that most people are afraid of of, of. if you can do if you can pick anything that most people are scared of mm-hmm. and you be 
become not afraid of it, not only that, but become good at it, you then have a superpower. And one of the easiest ones that I can think of, because you could do things like, you know, run a super fast marathon, climb a mountain, like, you know, uh, crazy stunts on a bike. You could do all these things that take a lot, like dangerous and whatever. Here's an easy one. And it's still hard, but it's easy. Learn how to get comfortable talking in front of people. That will separate you so much from so many other people. And just like sales and communication skills is invaluable. Mm -hmm. If you get good at talking, this is why I'm excited to do this because I'm not necessarily terrified of speaking in front of people, but of all of my methods of communication. Isn't that the number one fear that they tested? Like statistically, it's it's that and, you know, arachnophobia or whatever is up there high, but that was definitely, I I believe, the number one. Yeah, and and for me, I'm not scared. I mean, I'll do it. It's not a problem. Um, It's just I'm not super versed in it like I am with, this kind of conversation or, or small groups. I'll talk in front of small groups, no problem. So I can't wait to get really good at that or, or to practice it and get better at it is what I should say. Yeah, Because no, I feel no. like that's such a valuable, uh, that'll be such a valuable tool. And for us, for our growth, I think it'll be the next level. Well, that's, you know, you're you're touching on something that I think is an important point is, you know, learning in business to find your blue water, right? And I think everybody, when someone, like, what's happening right now? And I was talking to this kid the other day about this who's starting this podcast and he's getting into it. I'm kind of asking him what he's doing. And I said, you know, part of what, you know, the success of Mind Pump, I said, we have, we definitely were not talented on the mics whatsoever. There's like, we had, none of us knew what the fuck we were doing when we were doing it. But we did, I did see the blue water and what we were doing big time. And by blue water, I mean, it's just, it's uh, not shark infested, right? So shark infested water is red water. That's when you get into a space uh, you get into an industry that's overpopulated. Everyone's trying Tons to do it. Tons of people killing it. Right. We're, we're seeing that right now in marijuana. Like everybody is jumping on board. Starting to get more red. Right. And you're starting to see that happen even on podcasting now where, okay, the, the, it's cats out of the bag. There's money to be made here. Everyone's going to here. Let's all just jump in. And, you know, so you think you're doing kind of the right thing because, you know, everyone is doing it. And so therefore the industry going to grow. And you might make your way there and be okay because of that if your timing was early enough, right? If you timed it right and got in early enough, you might ride a wave and be shitty. We've seen examples of this. I mean, Mm -hmm. we know podcasts that I listen to and I'd be like, man, they're not that great, but they got in so early they rode the wave. So I think understanding that when you get into a space like this is really looking at it and saying, okay, what is somebody not, what need is somebody not fulfilling or what is a different, where's the blue water at? And for us, I remember going like, okay, I see these like health fitness podcasts that are really good and they're highly produced and they're putting out really good information and it it gets keeps my attention. But then I ask myself like would any of my clients or my buddies or anybody like listen to this? Like hell no. Like yeah. these guys they're it's one it's a one doctor interviewing some, you know, some scientist and they're talking about lab results and they're I mean stuff that I like cuz I'm learning. It's too boring. Yeah, yeah. It, but I'm such a small niche of people. So I really think that, you know, understanding and being able to see that was important early on. And then I saw the other side, which was like pure entertainment. Like, oh, maybe laugh. They're hilarious. All these things are great. Like, okay, I could see my buddies listening to that because it's really funny. But then it doesn't really add a lot of value to their life other than laughter and humor, which I think does add value to their life. But not like real uh, applicable things that they can do like working out better or doing things. And you're not, and you're not, you're, you're definitely influencing people, but you're not influencing people as if you were presenting good, you know, information that people could apply and change and whatever. That's what you mean by that value. You do that with entertainment. Right. And you've got a, a pretty crazy formula. Well, and nobody was really doing that in our space. Nobody was really combining this entertainment value that an average Jane or Joe who may not even be, I mean, that's when I all, that's another thing when I knew we were on the right track when I was meeting these people that would tell me, they would start off and they, you know, I'm not really into working out, but yeah, I love the yeah. show. I still yeah. hear that. I yeah. Like I, I know I love the stuff, the topics you cover. I think the information is, is great. Like I always feel like I learned something from it. Like I was like, okay, good. I know that I'm on to something because it's not, I knew finding another me out there would want to listen to this. Like yeah. I knew of finding another person like me that was seeking a little bit of entertainment with some good information that they could walk away with. Everybody. I knew that was out there, but I didn't know if it would draw people that had no desire to learn about really sure, about sure. fitness. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's important. So you see all these people jumping in. We have a lot of peers in the space that are starting podcasts up and it's like, Oh, I'm going to start a health and fitness podcast. Like, okay, cool. Well, what's, yeah, what's your angle? Yeah. What is different? What are you, what value are you going to add to people's lives that may not, and there may be something. And I've heard some people that I thought, you know, Oh, that's, that's a smart idea. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. No one's really doing that right now. You know, I, I had this, uh, idea that I want to do with my buddy still and I just we don't have the time to do it is 
you know, much of the the health and fitness space, what we talk about how fucked up and corrupt the fitness industry is, well, the medical marijuana and marijuana industry sure. is very much very much so the same. And when we talk about bro science, there's bro science in cannabis. Like grower science is these guys that have passed down information, family, generation, generation, and they just go about growing. Very few guys that I meet, very like none, I would meet when they when I first started getting into growing actually understood the science behind it like they were just people that had passed down information and so when they would talk about, oh you need to do this because that makes the crystals pop like what the fuck does that mean <laughs> you know what i'm saying like what the fuck is that on a breaking bad episode yeah right, right. so they, <laughs> they they would say things like that and I'd be like okay well what does that mean you know what i'm saying and so then i would go back and i would start to research and oh i said oh i get it when you when you flood the plant system with this much carbohydrates and that's the plant's way of responding by doing this but you can overdo that and you can underdo that. And there's a sweet spot for every strain. Like, oh shit, I'm onto something. You know what I'm saying? I would start to piece this stuff together and I became what you would call a master grower in a very short period of time because I just did the research. Are there any podcasts in that space? No, not like there are there are podcasts, but they're terrible. They're not entertaining to listen to. They're not informative and entertaining. They're either some like really nerdy guy talking about it's yeah. very similar to what our space was. So yeah. no one's gone in there, like gone in gave it, made it informing, it took, put a mind pump spin on it. And that's what my buddy is like, man, I love it. And he's a fan of our show, right? You guys know Sturgill. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's the, one, he's the one who's been, you know, pulling on my shirt for a while. Like, we got to do this. There's still no good podcasts that are doing that. And he's on another level. And he has the other side that, so Sal, I, you know, you have a lot of the in-depth uh, medical side because of the, the direction yeah. that you went. I have a lot of experience in, in the growing side. And then so does, and he's on a whole nother level with, the supplement nutrient and water oh, cool. and everything like that because of his, because he used to provide that for normal farms and his business is now growing to where he's starting to provide Dude, that. Did for, you know that there's uh, indexes, marijuana indexes now where you can follow the marijuana market on the stock market? Yeah. And I, I was looking at some of these and they've all had great returns. Yeah. Yeah, this is a good time to invest. No, it is. It really is. But the, the hard, again, the hardest thing with investing in that is similar to the hard thing with in, investing, and in, I see people doing in cryptocurrency, is also a great time to grab some of those things. But my recommendation when investing in either one of those is do your homework, do your research, pick three to five companies or things that you really believe in because you've done your research, and you know, invest five percent of your you know, uh, income that you can- Yeah, very volatile. Yeah, market. very small. Throw it in there and leave it up because it's early enough that, you know, this is like when you think back to the people that, oh, I wish I would have put $100 into McDonald's stock way back when, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, just fucking put it in there. And you know what? Think of it. Don't think about it anymore. I've been telling my my uh, brother-in-law and my, my, um, my other buddy who are, you know, they jumped on the crypto thing about the same time I did. And they're like- up and down with it and freaking out every time. Just like, leave I'm, it and yeah. just let it sit there. Yeah, yeah, leave it sit there. Don't let it, don't, I mean, and I know there's some guys that are using it like day trading and they're 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 making money off the swings of it, which if you know, if you can do your shit. Yeah, if you're going to day trade, you better know your shit. Yeah. And you have to have brass balls yeah. because you're going to have swings where some days you make thousands big and hits, sometimes you misses. lose. Yeah. yeah, it's like playing poker. Like yeah. the at the end result, you want to have positive. But you got to be able to deal with the swings, and I, I wouldn't have the—I don't think I have the fortitude. I wouldn't be able to like, lose ten grand. <laughs> it's like working in the in the medical well, mar mar marijuana, indus too, yeah, like, marijuana industry, dude. You're like just that. gonna end up uh, looking at a screen like all day, you know, nah. like freaking out. No, I, I I do my research. I throw money in it, and I just fucking forget all about it. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Check it out. Go download our app, Mind Pump Media. Then you can search all of the episodes for specific topics. For example. If you, licked up, if you looked up cannabis, this episode would probably pop up. I licked it up. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. 
If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support. And until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.